Frontier Racing right now. He's got tracks and he's got rhythm. Both of them. Maloney. Oh, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up the wall. Oh, my God. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my, oh God. my God. What? What? This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. This is the track last year that threw the spanner in the works. This is the track last year where everyone saw exactly what drivers were capable of and proved the biggest test to the metal of the sprint season. This is not going to be a 250 this year. This is two fantastic little sprint rounds. But first, it's super split to action. This is arguably one of the greatest leagues in all of iRacing. This is V8 Scops, and Australian touring car racing does not get much better than heading to the beautiful, I would say, pace, pace additions that can be found here at this track. Canadian Tire, Motorsports Park, shortened down to Motorsport. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Jake Sperry here in the commentary booth, joined by Rhys Gardner. We've got Jay Kennedy as well, who is on camera action for us today. Rhys, some say that this is a paint-by-numbers track, that it is very easy, that it is very similar in a lot of ways. It's only 10 turns. It's just a shade under four kilometers. But what it certainly is, is a fantastic challenge of top speed, high cornering grip, and everything else in between. It looks simple on paper, doesn't it? But you, can, you only need to take a look at these virtual racing cars going around this laser scanned uh, rendition of the circuit to realize that is far from the truth. There's bumps everywhere, the turns are fast, there's big curves, there's no tarmac runoffs here to save you if you go wide, and you're right on the edge all the way around. The West End Mazda Mo Sport Super Sprint getting ready to go for Super Split 2 action. And you can just see the scenes happening around the circuit right now as the Split 2 drivers are preparing to go around here for 28 laps in this initial race of the night. And these 28 laps require one mandatory pit stop. They cannot make it to the end on restricted fuel tanks, so they have to be very cautious about the way that they challenge themselves here today. But... This most sport track is absolutely fantastic. You head yourself to a very, very quick first corner. You're always uh, just pushing yourself down on brakes to go on board with Ian Bird for the moment. He's just dropping down to about 168, 170 before you head into this one. Clayton's corner, arguably the most difficult corner on the circuit. It's downhill. The track falls away from you, and then you move into Quebec, which is always looking to just be that momentum shift corner. Jared Filsell was so good there last year when he was making moves up through the field. He used that as his overtake corner. Turn four under the bridge, down the hill, and you have to be very quick on the brakes, uphill into five and six. This is the Moss Hairpin. And my goodness, that Moss Hairpin is one of the prime places to send down the inside. And if you couldn't get the envelope through the post, well, next day delivery happens at turn eight. Yeah, it absolutely does. This is the Andretti straight that Ian Bird's heading down now. And these final three turns of the circuit are an exercise in maintaining front end grip. Very fast entry down in fifth gear, but you're constantly slowing down the entire time through this right hander. You've got to keep it all the way to the right to widen the entry to the penultimate turn, hug the curb, and then back down into third, maybe second gear for this final turn. The start finish straight is very short, but it obviously matters. It certainly does matter, and in terms of mattering in this practice session, it is the 38 machine of Gone Rogue Motorsports. It's Jack G. Boyd, who currently tops the timing stands, but 
Qualifying is a little bit different for what happens in Super Split 2. Instead of having a dedicated qualifying session that drivers will have, the difference is going to be that wherever they qualified in pre-qualification, a very tight pre-qualification, 18 hours worth of time can be sunk in to get a lap time in over three days. If you get your magic time, then my goodness, you are in perfect position to make that push. So Jack Boyd in full control. There are surprises though, in terms of who has not made it into top split. 87 sticks out like a very sore thumb. He's had a very good qualifying season so far. The racing has not been brilliant, but this is not, in my opinion, a Sean Kelly track. Yeah, well, Sean Kelly, he's he's one of those guys that's been in and out of the saddle quite a bit over the last couple of years. He did a lot for V8 Scops in the early years of the championship, and he's, uh, he's a racer, as uh, all of us are at SimSpeed TV here in the iRacing Esports Network. But, uh, I, I mean, split two for him, it's just another opportunity to get his foot in the door, in my opinion. Remember, the winner of the split two race gets a free ticket into split one. And you're talking about some drivers who want that ticket and want to prove themselves at a massive, massive level. We've seen Split 1 people in Split 2 before. People who have been in Split 1 are the likes of the 690 of Mary Rushka, who just pulls herself down onto pit road. James Scott in the 088 has been knocking about for a little bit, looking to try and find a little bit of something that works out in play. Craig Jones has won split twos before to move himself up into that top split. Griffin Gardner has also been in that level and that area in the similar to TTL car. But there are a few, what I'd say, wild cards looking to make that push. No more than the 74 of Adam Blocker, who, for my money in this field, is the only American. Yeah, it definitely seems that way. And you only have to take a look at the time sheets in this practice session to see that the pre-qualification times don't tell the full story. The field is still incredibly close there. Obviously, we got Jack Boyd two tenths ahead of his closest rival, but look at second all the way down to about seventh. That's amazing gap. So tight around this short but fast track. It is absolutely brilliant as that uh, as first to 30th, sorry, as I... Uh, just choke myself up a little bit, have a very, very tight gap. They are all within one second around here, and that goes all the way back down to Nathan Tregarthen, who is 1.008 off the pace at the moment, which really does invite for some really nice and close racing that we are going to be seeing here today. But there is, of course, that magical prize at stake. And there is more than just that prize at stake today because we know, Reese, that a lot of drivers have themselves a lot to prove. There is a certain magical series coming up uh, in the next few months and I think drivers want to impress and how more impressive would it be if a driver comes from this second split, moves up into the top split and not only moves up into the top split but has a pretty good showing. Absolutely. We've seen it in the past, um, particularly uh, looking at Ross Rizzo's fortunes. Last season, he uh, made a lot of split two appearances, but you saw the way he improved over the year. And that's the kind of stuff that you see in this split two action. It, it's easy to, see, to say on paper, oh, you know, the, these are just the 30 to 40 other people that weren't fast enough to get into top split. Well, that might be true, but it's also an opportunity for them to further develop their skills, get some practice in a racing environment, and further hone their pace in these cars, which doesn't come easily at all. No, it certainly doesn't. And for some drivers who have been looking at pace, you've got the like, say, of Brody Whitmore, who has been pretty quick has been a bubble driver i would say always knocking on the door of split one and has been up there and has got in from time to time and he's had himself some very good karting experience in his days he's even beaten arguably the most legendary australian driver in sim racing at the moment in the form of josh rogers in a cart so he certainly does have a turn of pace about him just also seeing that mitchell mcleod in the 40 has just moved up into fourth position in this practice session. Oh, nice. Talk about rolling back the years. Mitchell McLeod with a great time. 
Absolutely. Of course, uh, Mitch is one of the OG Australian touring car racers on iRacing. He's been here pretty much from the start, and uh, he's won a few championships in his time as well. But he, uh, he loves to have a run in V8 Scops when he gets the chance. He'll be having a lot of fun there, not least looking at those timesheets. That's a good time. It is a very good time, and of course, we are just under five minutes away from making the start of racing happen. And really what this has been for a season is everyone just adjusting to what has been effectively a Trans-Tasman meta for the last three years or so. And now it's turned and changed. It's turned into an Evolution Racing Team meta. And when you are talking about Evolution Racing Team, it's not just a team of elites at the top. They are improving drivers all the time in the bottom ranks. Drivers that are there are all trying to make sure that they push forward and get the results that they want to start challenging on a more regular level at the top. Probably the biggest driver in this field who is part of that stable is the 027 of Jamie McKnight. And McKnight knows that he's got a lot of work to do. He's a middle-of-the-pack driver at the moment, both in qualifying and in this practice. Yeah, but absolutely. Jamie McKnight, of course, um, the man behind West End Mazda, the sponsor for, for this round of the series. He loves his sim racing. He's committed a lot to this evolving sport. And... Uh, Partnering up with Evolution Racing Team, one of the best decisions, I think, of his sim racing career because uh, he's really improved. That's Damon Mulqueen there on the other hand. For Sinji Sim Racing, finding the tire wall, that's the kind of stuff you can expect if you uh, have less than fortunate luck in those uh, last few turns of the circuit. Oh, yes, and it is worth saying as well that this is by no stretch of the imagination a Herman Tilke design track. There is no runoff area to be used here. It is grass all around the outside, which is going to be very difficult for traction. And I think a lot of drivers who know that there are a lot less margins for error than at other circuits, they all understand exactly what they need to do. This is an island first track and any small mistake, especially at some of the off camber corners around this track, will be punished incredibly heavily. Absolutely, and uh, you have to pay attention on the first lap in particular. Of course, uh, lap one drama is something that this series is no stranger to, but most sport is a track that doesn't have your uh, your real uh, opening turns that you see on other kinds of race tracks. They're all fast, all flowing. It takes you about half a lap to get to the slowest corner on the circuit, which we're seeing on screen at the moment. And uh, obviously not much space on the tarmac as well. That double apex turn too. If you're caught on the outside and you put a couple of wheels into the grass, you're as good as gone. It's, it's very much driving off a cliff at that point because there is next to nothing you can do at that pace and that level of gradient hill that you can do to really recover the vehicle. You are effectively strapped in for a roller coaster ride, which ends with a massive thump into the tires, of course. This most sport track has had famous races in the past. It has been uh, used on and off. It now finds a lot of uh, success when it comes to the uh, NASCAR trucks that often find themselves here. And I do always remember that race a couple of years ago where they wreck into the finish and then they continue to wreck despite the fact that they were teammates, uh, Reese. Yeah, certainly. This track's no stranger to controversy and no stranger to prestige. Actually hosted the Formula One Canadian Grand Prix during the 1960s and 1970s. So it's got its name etched into the history books. And uh, obviously we'll see history etched again today in sim racing terms, because my goodness, I always love it when V8 Scops comes to this place. Craig Jones testing out the pit entry there. You can see how tight it is. That's what the drivers have to deal with here. It's an incredibly tight pit entry, but they all understand that they have to look at when they are going to pit. And it's almost the fact that you've got to pit and not pit with anybody else at this track. It is a difficult pit road, especially for the uh, North American style of pit roads that we traditionally see. Is What we have seen from the iRacing service is that Australian pit roads are surprisingly the most hardest to get correct with the fact that they are long and very very narrow so most sport really one of these tracks where that pit road maybe comes a little bit more suited to home especially with the narrow nature of it but 
Practice time is all but over. They've had half an hour to work out their final uh, tweaks, as it were, as Sean Kelly goes second. But there is going to be a starting grid coming up for Super Split 2. And it shall look like this. On the pole position then will be Craig Jones and he will have Sean Kelly alongside who's looked fantastically quick. Brody Whitmore and Scott O'Keefe are on the second row. Fifth for Mitchell McLeod, sixth for Jack G. Boyd. Benjamin Smith starts seventh with Bob King in eighth. Adam Blocker, Mary Rushka starts on the fifth row. They're followed on the sixth row by Greg Sharp and Justin Wallace. Guy Leach and Gary Cooper taking up the next row with Dion Peters and Jamie and Do uh, Damian Johnston behind them. Ian Bird, who we rode on board with in practice, starts 17th. Ben Christensen alongside with David Kinman and Luke Page rounding out the top 20. Yes, Joshua Pickett, Job Stewart, then Griffin Gardner and Jamie McKnight, Matt Muggleton and Scotty Briscoe on the 13th row. Mark Newton, Jamie Stovold, Martin Casey and Shane Evans. Rest of the grid will cycle through. 38 drivers then looking to take to the start. Everyone knows exactly what is at stake. One place in the main event. They all know as much. Green flag drops, and let's get going. What a slow start from oh, the no. second row from Scott O'Keefe. And drivers already oh. with their vehicles about one, two, oh, and the track's blocked. He's got to come out. Track is blocked, and that's after about three seconds. Safety car comes out, and that happened right in the blink of an eye. Cold tires catch everyone. Oh my goodness, that is an absolute war zone down at turn one. That's going to take a long time to dissect. Almost half the field involved in that in some way. And it was all caused by that concertina effect. All those drivers going into that turn one. This is a modem simulation replay. Let's see what happened. Oh my goodness, cars airborne. Yeah, it was Mario Rushka who was the cause of that instant. She just got a lightning start. Looked down to the inside, just tagged the rear quarter panel of Bob King in front, who didn't go anywhere. King comes back across the circuit, and from there, where the track is one wide at best in terms of track limits, you've got nowhere to go, and six, seven, eight vehicles now are having to try and swarm a way through. Caution came out very, very quickly. Great work from Michael Koroleff and Simon Black, who are out there as the chief stewards for the racing that they've got going on, but not the start that we were expecting, not the start that we were wanting, but Craig Jones will happily tick off three laps on the book. Absolutely he will. I mean, this this it couldn't have gone more perfectly for him. He still has the lead, and he'll have the luxury of controlling the restart when the safety car comes back in. Exactly, and that means that he can also do something a little bit more cheeky, and that is fuel save the car at a track which is very heavy, would have to be said, Reese, on fuel consumption, knowing that there are not many big braking zones and you're constantly uh, jostling with the throttle to try and make sure you've got as much traction as possible. It is Craig Jones who can now save a little bit of fuel and make sure that this race falls in his favor we will get a rundown of who exactly has retired from this race once we get a full eyes view of who exactly has run into troubles i've got my eyes on the likes of mark newton who's made some good progress likes of justin wallace and benjamin smith has made some good progress in the early stages so everyone just has to be a little bit more cautious now they know what's happened off that start and let's not also forget live penalties in full effect as well the stewards may have some words to speak to after that opening start Absolutely. VH Scops uh, obviously run by a dedicated administration team and uh, they work their posteriors off to, uh, to try and make this series run as smoothly as possibly can be. They'll be looking at every one of those cars involved in that incident and I'm sure it'll take a while for them to assign blame, but uh, at the end of the day, I think someone is, uh, is going to have to uh, take the bullet for that one. The top seven drivers have largely remained unchanged. Adam Blocker has gained three positions inside your top ten. Dion Peters, the biggest gainer with five. Jamie McKnight, though, has gained 13 spaces off the start. Same with Mark Newton. And uh, you have to look even further back. 16 for Bruce Kiley making positions. 15 for Wayne Taylor and 10 for Scotty Briscoe. 11 for Jamie Stovold. So the Mega Black racing cars are making big progress. 
up through the field. Your big losers in all of that. Bob King, Damian Johnstone, Josh Pickett, Griffin Gardner, Martin Casey, Brett Hender, and Nathan Tregarthen. Six out of this race in the opening lap of this Super Split 2. And that is very uncanny and I would say uncharacteristic. Yeah, it's not the kind of thing that we usually see. It's uh, it's just a case of the narrow start area at this track catching the drivers out. We have raced at this track for many, many years in this iRacing simulation, and that's just one of the risks you take when you race around here. Unfortunately, racing being the inherently chaotic beast it is, this was bound to happen at some point. It certainly was, and you can definitely say that things have not been running a certain level and a certain degree for certain people. I just fixed my microphone there a second. Yes, I know it was a little bit loud, so we'll just bring that back down here a second. But but We've got a lot of drivers coming into the pits, Sperry. Have a look. I'm not. I am not surprised at that. And those drivers coming in will be looking to hit fix damage that happened in the opening stages. Damon Mulqueen uh, is down on pit road, as is Robert Hooper, Guy Leach, Damian Johnstone is stuck on pit road. David Kinmond has just come down in, as has Stovold and Evans and Hender, and those drivers all know that they've got to get back out and going again. It's a free pit stop, though. Why wouldn't they take it? They know they're not going to lose too much in terms of track position, and they will be able to have a shorter stop to finish this race and gain positions that way. Absolutely. Remember, it's a 60% fuel tank restriction, round about 67 liters in the tank of these things that's how much they're allowed to put in so uh, any chance that you can get to top up the fuel and make your last pit stop shorter the drivers are definitely going to take that fix a bit of damage while you're at it too uh, that damage on the 420 car of gary cooper unfortunately unfixable it's you don't need downforce around here anyway yeah you are going to need a bit of downforce and uh that is uh, sometimes what is looking at when drivers have uh, a bit more rather represents Picasso art than a race car. Um, sometimes has to be said. But Craig Jones in control of the field behind the iRacing Porsche first safety car. Lights still on on top of that pace car. So we will be going for another lap around the track at least here. Heading to lap four of this event. And we do assume that the lights will come off at the start of lap four, meaning we will get back to racing at the end of lap four, the start of lap five here at Mosport. So five laps ticked off for Craig Jones. He will be very happy at the way that he's managed to make that work. Mitchell McLeod gained a position off the start, as did Jack Boyd. And I tell you what, Mitchell McLeod is representing the older generation of Australian touring car drivers. It is a lot different for Jack Boyd. He is part of that new breed who is pushing forward and starting to make headlines, especially in the AOSC Championship, where Jack Boyd has been nothing short of sensational against some really strong drivers who find themselves in top split of Scott. Absolutely. Uh, the, the other thing that you have to consider if, if you're new to the Australian sim racing scene is we have a proper career ladder to speak of here. Oceanic Sim Racing, who organise this series, they also run development series and uh, a regular league through the week. And also you've got AOSC on Friday nights. So if you want to race these big touring cars, there's plenty of opportunities for you to do so in this area of the world. Lights are off on top of the IROC Porsche first safety car. We will be going green this time by. So for Craig Jones, he's been able to tick off a few laps and he will be very happy at the way that he has been able to tick off those laps. He's only really had to race one corners of one corner's worth of racing at the moment. But with a single file restart, he will be in complete control of this field and he has to break Sean Kelly very quickly. Sean Kelly is one of the quicker drivers when it comes to this B8 Scops Championship. And if Craig Jones knows that there is a name behind Sean Kelly, he's got to run and run fast. Yeah, that triple one, you can expect him to put the hammer down at the apex of the last corner, if not slightly before. It's going to be a long and tedious run down this Andretti straightaway that uh, isn't really a straight, but hey, it's the longest flat out section on the circuit, so it obviously counts. Over the crest and through these final turns, it's time to psych themselves up. It certainly is, as now Jones just 
pushes that pace just a little bit further backwards here. Kelly, Whitmore, McLeod, Boyd, Blocker. Don't count out Adam Blocker. We haven't seen him at all in this season. He's pre-qualified once before, but he didn't turn up to race. But Adam Blocker is looking to make some good pushes. Has been very good in the likes of an Indy car, for example. But we'll see how these Australian touring cars work for him. Pace Jones is already off. Take... He is Ooh, already off almost. So he is right there just waiting and he is going to go immediately with the pace car diving in. Green flag goes. And remember, oh, no. he cannot pass before the start finish line. He's going to check him right up. Jack Boyd looking to the inside, as is Brody Whitmore. McLeod runs a little bit wide, and they're going to be too wide as they head to Clayton's corner. Turn two on track. So that was a little cheeky there from Craig Jones. Just preying on that vulnerability, and the front six remain unscathed at the front. So that was a bit of waiting games. They're almost coming into play into Quebec. They come along, and now it's all about setting up for Mario Andretti, but the jump has not worked for Jones. He's got a firm train behind him. Absolutely, he has not managed to gap them at all. And we come up to Moss Corner for the first time at racing speed. It's all about the exit. You can't touch that curb on the inside. It unsettles you too much. Kelly is still managing to stay with Jones just slightly. Look at them riding those bumps, struggling for traction. 650 horsepower these cars are putting down to the ground. And the slipstream is, oh my goodness, down at Moss, we got another problem. James Scott involved in that one. Oh, no! Oh, that is not going to be looked at well by the stewards. Entering at right angles to the racing line. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. Motor simulation replay up on screen. So James Scott gets someone to dive down the inside. And then, oh, it's just secondary oh, contact there from Gary Cooper in the pursuit car there. Just running in. And that was not ideal. That was one thing. A rejoin, though, has to be looked at. James Scott, maybe in a fit of anger there, just turning the vehicle around, and that will not be looked at nicely. And if that is seen as anything short of an incident, then there will be troubles. Adam Blocker, though, side by side through turn two, off into the grass goes Justin Wallace, but he keeps the foot in, looking at Quebec. Can he get the power down? My goodness me, oh. Justin, that's a move. That certainly is. That's one of the best corners on the track to watch racing through. And the run down to Moss Corner once again. See, we're there already. That's how short this track is. The guys complete this track in less than 80 seconds. Looking at Brody Whitmore and Mitch McLeod, it uh, looks like Mitch is starting to look even more racing. Yeah, Jamie Stovold is limping home, wounded after all of that, and is pulled over to the side to allow everyone to go through at the discretion of Simon Black, the chief race steward here in V8 Scots. But these top five now have broken away. Blocker has been the one to drop back and has lost two positions, one to Wallace and one to Benjamin Smith. But these front five all understand something. They've all got to make sure that they get in play, and that is almost at the moment splintering between a group of two and a group of three because it's Brody Whitmore who is starting to struggle, who is starting to be unable to make any progress forward. Look at how Sean Kelly is just ragging on the rear of Craig Jones at the moment. This is the pressure that Jones now has to weather in terms of storms. Absolutely, and Jones, uh, we could see through turn one, he was taking a little bit too much of that extra track on the inside, which is bumpier than you think it is. Kelly was just able to ride those bumps better, get a smoother exit. It's about those exits. That's where Kelly is really starting to, oh, talk about entry as well, uphill into Moss Corner. This is awesome to watch. It certainly is, and they are lining up in terms of corners. Jamie McKnight under pressure as well. There's Dion Peters just behind looking to try and make some progress and get a position made but look at this one battle for the lead jones being hauled in by kelly whitmore being hauled in by boyd as i believe we have one lost from the dance and that was mitchell mcleod who very quickly oh, yeah. lost contact that was right on the exit as well of the moss corner he just got himself onto the curb oh my word he saves it and Mitchell McLeod is a lucky, lucky boy as he continues on in fifth position. So if we can get a motion simulation replay of what happened to him, my goodness, you don't get much closer to disaster. You absolutely don't. And uh, Moss Corner, of course, one of the more challenging corners on this track, designed, of course, by Sterling Moss. 
He saw the track plans and said, hey guys, you should make this a double apex corner and make the exit tighter. And they did. And this is the result. Have a look at Mitch spinning up that wheel. Very well saved. Yeah, fantastic save, but it does just splinter the group ever so slightly as they push on lap eight of 28 at the moment. Justin Wallace oh. looking uh, behind Benjamin Smith and he's just not there, but just runs out a little bit wide, slightly misses the apex, but now he's got to just drag that power back here on the straight. Worth noting as well, wind speeds are very, very slow at the moment, so there will be no benefit to a headwind or a tailwind here at this track. Battle for the lead, not quite close enough. Same for third position, and now for sixth, Still not quite there, but three Noah's Ark little backs battling two by two, all looking to try and push and try and gain one more. Yep, and just one more is sometimes all you need. They were right on the edge here, and Kelly almost going for a move there into turn one. Look at how much track they're both taking on the inside. Bumper to bumper, out of turn one. Not quite close enough to make a move into turn two, but why would you? Why would you? Well, we've seen Justin Wallace make it happen. It's the element of surprise. Maybe a look into maybe Phil Sell's favorite of Quebec corner. Not quite as they now get back up onto the power. And now Brody Whitmore starts seeing, OK, well, you're looking X, Y and Z looking for moves. I can just try and close up this gap and put a little bit more added pressure on. As Kelly goes oh. a little sideways, getting a Tokyo out as he heads his way through the Moss corner. He is certainly using that rear axle and locking it up to make some moves. Look at Jack Boyd, though, just ragging on that rear end of, uh, of uh, Brody Whitmore. Now moves to the outside to try and make it happen. Will not have any benefit of the draft. Brody Whitmore has been fantastic in ghosting through and now has to defend that outside line. Gone, oh, road, gone around the outside trying to make it happen. Oh, he tried, didn't he? He really did, but it, it takes a lot of effort to hold the outside around there. You almost have to get back on the throttle. He's going to have to wait at least a couple more corners, but have a look at how close they are to the top two now. Kelly and Jones have backed themselves right into these guys. Yes, and that is only going to make things a lot more juicy. Mitchell McLeod, you had that small error. And a look, looking down to the inside at turn two. Kelly's not going to wait. He pushes for it at Clayton's corner. You don't make a move there. He compromises his exit. Brody Whitmore down the inside at Quebec. But there's a little tap there from uh, Jack Boyd. Boyd's going to look to the inside as well. He's got to go the long way at four. We'll have the inside for five at Moss. But I think that's two positions costed by being too aggressive there for Sean Kelly, who got bogged down and frustrated behind the leader, Craig Jones. Yeah, easy mistake to make. And Brody Whitmore trying up the inside at Moss. Oh, but have a look at Jones with the traction on the exit and Boyd too. I think Whitmore sticking it to the inside a little bit too much. Compromises his exit as Sean Kelly loses another spot to Mitchell McLeod. Here's a repeat of last lap between Brody Whitmore and Jack Boyd. What is the number 38 going to do this time? Oh, so close. You could barely fit a piece of paper between these guys. Boyd is hungry, though. He can see they, they make touch. contact. Just a little touch. He has to swap back in. But have a look at that. Sean Kelly, three positions lost. Now Brody Whitmore is looking at a potential win. He is, and that is very, very telling. But don't count Craig Jones out of this. He may be a big dive down to the inside at turn one, trying to get it to work. But that power off the exit works for Craig Jones, who is backing the entire field up at this stage. He is having a sterling defensive drive through 17 minutes worth of racing. And we're not even halfway through this race. They're still oh. pissed off. Another massive lunge from Whitmore, using that karting experience down the inside. And he now has to hold it around the outside of four to make it work through five banging doors as they oh, head no. through big more contact. And he just holds it together. Boyd now takes to the outside and tries to go around the outside. Contact oh. with McLeod. They somehow all slow it up. And Mitchell McLeod may just get second. No, Jack Boyd goes around. Gets the contact. He gets put spread eagle. And just like that, Jones is off to the races. Oh, and Jack Boyd just got absolutely smashed in the front quarter. That is going to be one big modem replay to dissect. And it all started uh, through turn one, but this is what happened down at Moss Corner. Mitch McLeod trying to be opportunistic, but Boyd had not absolutely nowhere to go. He didn't, and that is very true. Ouch. These drivers 
lost everything. There was a little bit more contact as well, which was not ideal, but it did set him straight and he's able to get back out and going again. The gap at the front, though, has extended to 1.1 seconds for Craig Jones, and that is exactly what he was looking for, the ability to break away. But this race is far from over. This is now brought back in. Benjamin Smith, Justin Wallace, and Adam Blocker into the pack. Greg Sharp trying desperately in the 747 to bring his stealth Simforce car back onto this pack as well. So a lot of drivers, a lot of opportunities here to make themselves at home and to get themselves up to position number one. It may have to take some pit stop trickery to make this one work, but on lap 12, this has officially gone off as one of those races which will go down in memory. I still can't quite process what happened on the last lap. There's so much crammed into just a few moments. But one thing that I will draw attention to, how good was Craig Jones? He was able to maintain a calm and cool head all the way through that, even through Whitmore's aggressiveness. And he still got the lead to show for it. Kelly, meanwhile, has managed to get himself back up into second. This is a possible chance at redemption for the TTR driver. Luke Page under pressure, Scotty Briscoe looks to make the move down the inside and that puts Briscoe up 16 positions there as they push forward. Jack Boyd says, yeah, great driving boys, really sarcastic there as he is not happy with the way that that ended in his favour. But Briscoe gained 16 and now Scott O'Keefe to try and pull away down to the inside here on Luke Page in the KRF car and just about manages it. We'll have to look at turn two. Vehicle coming out of pit road is Job Stewart who has to get out of the way and oh, just about through. That's beautifully done. Got a key. He gains the position. Look though for the lead again. That gap got chopped by half a second by Sean Kelly and Mitchell McLeod. Absolutely did, and I think it's obvious by now that Craig Jones is really starting to manage this race. He's probably still fuel-saving a little bit, trying to shorten that pit stop. Kelly and McLeod, meanwhile, they're going full pelt, full pelt sorry, down these straights, not lifting off even a moment early. Have a look at the slipstream that Sean Kelly has got. Cloud passing over the circuit, track temperature a little cooler. Jones has to go defensive. He does. It's full hammer and tongs at the front. Half distance will be scored complete at the end of the next lap. But Sean Kelly, now with the bit between his teeth, makes Whoa. the lunge to the inside. And Mitchell McLeod takes the initiative, dives onto pit road, makes the call that probably could do everything. But it's a drive-through penalty there for Mitchell McLeod. Sorry, we're just getting word of that. That was for the incident with Jack Boy. And I'm not surprised that McLeod's race is day and done the drive-through that he's got. Now it's a mano a mano battle, man versus man, between Kelly and Jones, because Brody Whitmore is 1.7 seconds off the back of this one, carrying Smith and Wallace with him, as well as Adam Blocker trying to hang on to the coattail. We've got to remember, these guys still have a pit stop to come up as well. They'll have to keep that in mind as the race enters its second half. But that top two looks like it's well and truly... Oh, as I, just as I say that, Kelly runs a little bit wide. Yeah, we've seen how Sean Kelly has been very, very uh, unorthodox with his line through the Moss Corner, and that was maybe the downside of that unorthodox line is the fact that if you do push a little bit wide, you are more at risk to losing time than other drivers will be. So that just bridges the gap and gives a little bit more respite to Craig Jones. Oh, Kelly, he's very overshot again. And yep, you're absolutely right. Sean Kelly is now just starting to lose that concentration here, Reese. That's the big worry that these drivers are having. If you break that concentration, you do have to take maybe upwards of half a lap to get oh. that back. Oh my goodness, a little bit of biffo in the pits there between a, between a couple of drivers, the 91 and the 56. Uh, well, 55, sorry. Mr. Whitmore and Mr. Smith. They, uh, they'll be looking at each other through their VR goggles. Uh, come on, mate. No need for that. Oh, no! Jones! The leader's gone off at turn two! He's in the wall! Wow. Unbelievable. So Craig Jones is out of this one. Into the wall. Forced error, potentially, as he heads through turn two. Replay up on screen brought to you by Motum Simulations, and it looks technical. Nothing yeah. more, nothing less. It was a slam on the brakes through turn two, and at the worst possible time, in control of this race, Craig Jones hands the lead to Sean Kelly. My goodness, and this is what a hardware issue in sim racing looks like.
Brakes on, couldn't get them off. My goodness, that's heartbreak for well, the fit driver. It. Well, he's, he's managed to get it. going again, but he's got no chance of winning this one now. No, well, it will be a case of, well, what can I do from here? Just trying to join back on track behind Ian Bird now in 19th position. Craig Jones will be incredibly frustrated at the way that that one will end for him. But it is the light now for your race leader, who is now still going to be Sean Kelly. He has himself 1.9 seconds at the front of the field as he is in full control. Oh, no, he's no, no, no. He's Turn two off. has other oh, ideas. <laughs> It does, and now there goes Justin Wallace into the race lead net at the moment. Down the inside tries Adam Blocker. Everybody struggling. What is going on? This is crazy. I haven't seen that happen before. Nor me, but <sighs> my word. My word. Sean Kelly making the mistake, and oh, now Wallace. Wallace slightly runs wide as well, so Adam Blocker playing blocker as he now tries to go through and i know adam blocker has one thing in his arsenal he has a library of all the people who keep making blocker references to him uh, when it comes to how he races so adam blocker now will try and pull that in those mistakes have helped two people indefinitely one is benjamin smith who already has four seconds over brody whitmore so benjamin smith could be in prime position right now. Any takers on the lane. One in, two in, red in, blue in. Yeah, looks like it. And Kelly, oh, he had to have a couple of goes at that as he went in. Wallace staying out. That's the lap car of Griffin Gardner behind him. David Kimmon and Matt Muggleton are swapping positions there at the uh, the third last turn. But front end grip seems to be what's plaguing these drivers because Sean Kelly, I've noticed, he keeps running wide at the entry of that third last turn. Very, very true. Let's get an eye on Benjamin Smith, who heads out of White's corner, the final corner, out on track, over the start-finish line. And is there a jump? No, there is not. So Sean Kelly gets out ahead of Adam uh, Blocker and ahead of Benjamin Smith, which is massive because that is a lot of work that Smith and Brody Whitmore have to do. They were very long in terms of their stocks, and I can't help but wonder how much that entry, that pit entry, uh, came in and made some changes. There's a wide line taken by Sean Kelly trying to get things going, as that was a three-second quicker stop, I do believe, there from Sean Kelly. Yeah, well, he must have uh, saved a lot of fuel running behind Craig Jones. And have a look at his line through Moss. He's got nothing left in those tyres already. He's struggling absolutely everywhere you look. Oh, well, Sean Kelly, I think, is just pushing a little bit too hard now. And that style may just come and bite him back in the behind. If he's not careful, Adam Blocker is no slouch. He's done brilliantly in series such as the Lionheart series he's been good at. In comes Scotty Briscoe. In comes in Scott O'Keefe looking to make a stop as now still leading this one. Justin Wallace but that gap now extends over Luke Page to 9.6 seconds as the last of the drivers need to come in and make that stop and on you, Sean Kelly and Adam Blocker's gap is just 7 tenths of a second Adam Blocker is right in this one. And let's not count out Justin Wallace. He was ahead of Blocker when the pit stop cycle started. 100%. This is going to be a very interesting finish to this one. They got 11. Uh, well, when they cross the line next, it will be 10 to go for our leaders. What Sean Kelly has to do is look after his tyres. Adam Blocker, I think, has uh, been doing that for pretty much the whole race. He's got a bit more grip at his disposal than Kelly. You can see it in the body language of the cars. Let's see what happens down at Moss Corner. A little bit of oversteer again from Kelly, and he swims himself wide for the second part of the corner. But Blocker, you can see right behind him in the blue car a bit smoother as we all know at trans tasman racing the set is built around one man now and that is madison down so they have to make sure that they fit that style of driving if they want to push forward they do have david kim in front that will be for position as and when they catch there have been drivers who came down in as the race leader is on the lane that is justin wallace that hands the lead to luke page who controls the destiny now at the front of this field but wallace Looking in the box, he's under that Michelin footbridge and he's looking to pull off and away he goes. But there will go Sean Kelly, there will go Adam Blocker, there will go Benjamin Smith and he will be with Greg Sharp 
who makes his way through. And there will be Brody Whitmore as well. So second pack now for Justin Wallace, who had a long stop. Whitmore Ooh. down the inside at turn two. Always a dangerous rejoin. And he has to uh, yield and give up that position. And fair enough, too. When you've got cars coming at you at racing speed, exiting that pit lane, you just want to let them go, recalibrate yourself, and make sure that you can drive cleanly again. It's all about getting to the finish in these races. Yes, it is a sprint, but, hey, the old adage, to finish first, you must first finish, rings true. Certainly does. Now, great run from Sean Kelly. This is a move on David Kinman, and this will be for third position out on track sorry no for fourth position sorry as matt muggleton's just three seconds down the road kinman i think understand i'm not on the same strategy i'm just gonna let you go and down the inside and all oh, traffic had to be a little bit uh eyes there in the back of the head for gary cooper had to take a little chunk to go the different way smith is going to struggle now around the outside and that is going to cost slightly a bit of time but now block can use this draft here from kinman try and pull a way back in as out of pit road will come job stewart but we got three drivers at the moment luke page bruce kiley Matt Muggleton, who are out there at the moment. And this is my question. If, are they drivers who pitted right at the start of this one reason? If they are, are they playing the fuel save game to make their one stop work? Well, uh, I think I think it was Matt Muggleton that, um, and Kinmond as well, they were among the first to pit. So keep an eye out for, for Matt Muggleton and Kinmond. They were, uh, I think they pitted under the first safety car period. So they may have to make another tour through the lane again just to get a splash and dash. Have a look at how aggressive Blocker is into Moss Corner. I think this might be another move down the straight. Kinman uh, obviously aware of the circumstances here, as you said, this time last lap. Thing is, though, it's taken an entire lap for Adam Blocker to pull that position back. So getting right on the binders, moving to the inside, will take the position, but Sean Kelly is going to run away with things at the moment luke page goes on to start lap 21 then of this event bruce kiley is just five and a bit of change seconds behind that gap was 5.7 it is now 6.3 so it's losing time matt muggleton though is gaining 82 that last time by put two tenths out of the leader as sean kelly is just 3.3 back so if matt muggleton's got to play the fuel game He's also got to play the defensive game against Sean Kelly. Now, that's the hardest job in the world. Yeah, it certainly is. And on board with Justin Wallace as he tries to chase down Brody Whitmore through turn two. That gives you a good perspective of what it's like for the drivers. But, uh, yeah, this, um, this battle, again, that we're looking at between Benjamin Smith and David Kidman looking interesting. What's this replay for, I wonder? Well, we'll get, we'll get a look at that. This is a pass made, so... David Kinman here on the Motor Simulation replay. This is heading up the hill into Moss, is it? No, that will be into uh, Quebec corner. Down the inside at turn three, Benjamin Smith making good use of that move and gaining a position which he really, really wants to do and was able to achieve. But now look at Brody Whitmore under pressure. Here comes Wallace. Inside line was just defended enough. It will have to be the long way round here for the 213 machine. And on the break here, it's a train of at least four with Jamie McKnight on the back. So is Dion Peters. And that is a well-made move from Justin Wallace, who has been a king of making it happen. But look at Whitmore, straight line trying to come back. And he's on two wheels and bang! They oh. both go into the wall on the inside. Now they're three wide, trying to get the position. Are they? Dion Peters thinks better of it. Jamie McKnight steals the position away. Now from Greg Sharp. Yeah, well, that's um, that's what happens when you try and come back too quickly. I mean, it is very tempting to throw one up the inside at the last turn, and Brody Whitmore being the racer he is, you'd almost expect him to do that. But unfortunately, a bit optimistic, I think. Getting up on the curb and onto two wheels. Stewards will be looking at that one uh, pretty dimly, I think. I think he's been a bit too aggressive there, so that will be under investigation. Eye on Matt Mogleton, though. This is the battle for second. Bruce Kiley starting 36th out of 38 drivers who took to the start of this one. This has been a great drive from Kiley, who's just kept out of trouble. Now Matt Muggleton looking to make that position. Uh -oh. What? No! Sideways! <laughs> sideways! Saves it! My word, Matt! How did he save it? Second bit of uh, sideways saves it. But there was the moment that probably defines the race. 
Oh, it defines this circuit full stop. Goodness me, this modem simulation replay is going to be amazing. He just caught the grass on the entry. What did it look like from on board? Oh, I'd love to see how much he cranks the steering wheel here. There's Kylie in front of him through the windscreen over the bump. Whoa! Goodness me, look at that amount of lock he put on to recover that thing. That's amazing. The thing is as well that his tires are super heated up now and they are going to need to cool if he is to continue. And all this trouble as well as Christensen needed to get out of the way for Sean Kelly. Kelly gets hampered coming off of the exit of Quebec corner and now Adam Blocker is still slightly there but he's a little bit more pedestrian with Christensen uh, who now runs himself off the track and allows Blocker the chance to go through and Benjamin Smith will take the opportunity to go through as well. Now these four are all fighting it together. Let's not forget 535, who's now eight seconds clear at the front of the field here. Luke Page having a good drive in the KRF car. Now has himself five laps at the stripe, but can he get himself all the way home? At the moment, there is no signs of pitting from the 535. Oh, Kylie there in issues with Brody Whitmore is out. Yeah, he is, and we're going to see what happened to him here. This was on the run up to Moss Corner. That's McLeod behind him. So what happened here? Oh, he just straight off. went straight off. Technical. That might be, yeah, technical, probably. That's a shame. It was an interesting run from Brody Whitmore, but uh, ultimately not to be. Second Certainly and third, is. meanwhile, back on. Yes, Bruce Kiley is the cork in the bottle, and now the quick drivers are there as well. Kiley is dropping time. He dropped a second and a half last time by i wonder if kylie's playing the fuel game here and is trying to save at every opportunity give himself the chance to come out and get a fantastic finish by the 653 standards but look at this molten is all over the place trying to find it how late do you oh. mr kelly oh he nearly put a nose down the inside bump given by molten hurry up everyone's behind it's almost like we're waiting for a cubicle at the moment and everyone's just dancing around on their feet, waiting, come on, we need to go, we need to go. Now Muggleton will start pulling to the inside. Had a massive moment a lap ago. Now looks to try and finally get it done. There's one position, and Kelly is going to follow straight in the tracks, and there we go. Now Kelly has just two positions left to make at this stage in the race with Luke Page now away with only a handful to go. Yeah, and... The, the eyes will be on his fuel numbers, uh, whoever can see them anyway. And Blocker, big move on Kylie there into the first turn, but I don't think Kylie did much to defend that. He recognizes what's going on here. He had nothing to defend it. Now Adam Blocker has got to get aggressive here, as does Benjamin Smith, who's maybe a little bit too far back at the moment to really crank and do anything possible to make this happen. Kelly desperately trying to find a way through as Benjamin Smith gets down the inside at Quebec of Bruce Kiley, who officially drops outside of the top five and now into seventh, uh, sorry, sixth position. Now look at Matt Muggleton. Again, the pressure is there from the Trans-Tasman car. Sean Kelly again wants to make a move at the prime place, turn number eight out on track this will be the last position on the road that kelly will be able to make but muggleton now knows how much he has to defend this one to the inside goes sean kelly looking to make this one work and has he got it sorted you bet he has if there was not much that muggleton could do on that outside line luke page has run the gauntlet he can't go any further nor could matt muggleton Pace now with Sean Kelly, and it's up to Adam Blocker now to bring that gap down with three laps to go at most sport. And what a three laps this is going to be. We've seen these guys going at each other for most of these 28 laps. If Kelly can just keep a handle on those tires, keep a handle on those bumps, he'll be able to just hold on to victory. Page coming out. Uh, well, it's going to be 11th, I believe, as uh, he gets passed by Greg Sharp from Stealth Simforce and uh, Matt Muggleton exiting the pits as well in position 14. So that's the end of that story for those guys. It is, and it was a great run from them, but ultimately they needed three more laps worth of fuel. How are the tyres on Sean Kelly's car? Mistake from Adam Blocker slightly as he just pushed a little bit wide at Moss, so easy to do. But Blocker 
now has himself that opportunity to try and close down in the toe. He's got just enough, I think, just to bring that gap in. Also, let's not forget the battle for the top 10. Scott O'Keefe in ninth, now making a move on Dion Peak here for eighth position. And that one will be a very big push. Can he just get that line? He does. And I think he's just going to get it here as they get onto the brakes into eight. And that will be position hard fought, but taken. Yes, it is. Yeah, you can never quite tell until they start turning left again, can you? Oh, have a look at Peters, still having a look up the inside. This is a great little pack here in the back of the top ten. But uh, top two, you can see the, uh, the gap is now eight tenths of a second between them. And that is third place there, Benjamin Smith. And wow, this is all of your top ten here. That's how close the field still is after all this time. Top ten still split oh, like this. That seconds and yes have a look at exactly what's going on because uh, Peters is having to defend massively as Kinman loses one position and nearly a second as uh, there is Mitchell McLeod going around the outside is he going to do the big move down to the outside or oh, he thought of it but well scouted the idea on Peters they get up on the brakes into Moss Corner for the penultimate time can he dive down the inside oh. McLeod bang and there goes the uh, Mega Black Racing Car, losing one position, losing two, and maybe a third and fourth may follow as well. Jordan Kelly, white flag, will be coming out for him as the final lap will ensue, with Adam Blocker just fading when he needed pace the most here at Mosport here in Bowmanville, Ontario, Canada. Now that gap, which was eight tenths of a second, remains now it increases it's nine tenths of a second kelly now feels like he's got a margin but we've seen mistakes already this race from him there could be a chance for one last sting in a very very uh enthralling tale that we have seen also got that battling that has been going on behind we will keep a half eye on that one as they head through turn number three out on track that is of course the quebec corner but for adam blocker knows he's running out of time and if anything is to happen there's got to be a mistake here to make sure there is a pounce there are no mistakes from sean kelly who many can argue who does not deserve to be in here with the turns of paces that he's had at the start of this season he's been up there inside the top 10 in v8 scops for the majority of qualifying runs this track did not suit him but has worked hard he has been diligent and he has paid off and persevered. Three corners to go. And now, just keep it calm. Keep it really nice and tight here, Sean. Because two corners and finally White's corner remains. Sean Kelly moves to the main event as he holds off Adam Blocker and wins at most sports. Big round of applause there for Kelly. Fantastic performance. And he kept his head when it mattered the most. There's Scott O'Keefe and Dion Peters still fighting. Little attempt at a move, but he wasn't able to get it done. Nope, just ran out of road in the end, and that one was never going to be in favour as the last few drivers start making their pushes over to the line. Damon Mulcahy and Job Stewart in their own little battle for um, not any positions at all. They are seven laps indifferent, so that much is a case to be made. So final drivers making their way around and finishing this race but my goodness me it had absolutely everything let's get ourselves official classified results how racing has finished here at canadian tire motorsport park for super split two sean kelly picks up a ticket and that golden ticket heads you to the main event 41 minutes and a bit of change as well gives him the win by only a second over Adam Blocker, who deserves massive plaudits for the way that he drove that race. Benjamin Smith finishes in third with Jamie McKnight coming home in fourth position, starting from 24th on the grid. Bruce Kiley had a stormer. He was your biggest mover and shaker in the field. He went up 31 positions for a top five finish with Mitchell McLeod finishing sixth, Greg Sharp seventh, Dion Peters in eighth. Scott O'Keefe slipped down the order from 4th to ninth, but Luke Page managed to make up 10 positions. 
Started in 20th, he rounds out the top 10. David Kinman and Wayne Taylor behind him. Matt Muggleton and Scotty Briscoe as well. Great performances coming up through the field, as is Robert Hooper. He started 38th, dead last, up into 15th. But the top 16 rounded out by our pole sitter, Craig Jones. He will be ruining this day. He will be after technical issues. Dropped him out of the race lead. Ian Bird is your last finisher on the leading lap in 17th. Ben Christensen, one lap down in 18th. All these drivers are a lap down or failed to finish. Mark Newton, Scott Clark, Griffin Gardner struggled. Add did Brody Whitmore, who uh, definitely left an impression on a lot of vehicles uh, as well as this race. Uh, with Joshua Pickett as well, dropping positions. Justin Wallace, very late on, losing his race. Gary Cooper in the number 420 car is classified 25th. He was still running at the end, as was Job Stewart. But now we get to the retirements. Damon Mulqueen, Jack Boyd, Damian Johnston, Guy Leach, James Scott, and Shane Evans. All of them caught up in the various dramas through the race. And rounding out the field, Sperry, these are the victims of that lap one turn one crash. Jamie Stovold, Mario Rushko, who was the cause, Bob King, who was the victim, Martin Casey, Brett Hender, and Nathan Tregarthen, all of whom did not make one corner over the course of this Mo Sports event. But, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, stay with us here on the iRacing Esports Network because when we come back, the fallout from Super Split 2, but we start gearing up towards races of the main event, V8 Scops championship which is evolution fighting within itself
Growing up as a kid in Oklahoma, where I'm from, the Chili Bowl is the biggest race that we have. The Chili Bowl has kind of been my favorite race of the year. Growing up a dirt racer in Oklahoma, that's kind of the holy grail. Fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he can't win the outside of both of them. Maloney! Oh, he's, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up the oh hill. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my goodness. Half the field's going to get rolled. Six very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's massive. This is it. Oh, this is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my oh, God. God, what? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to V8 Scops Racing Action. We've just come out of Super Split 2 and some amazing racing that has been just in front of us. A massive, massive victory coming in for one brilliant race and one brilliant driver as well. Sean Kelly joins us from Trans Racing. Sean. We have to talk about that race because you needed to look in a million directions to work out whether a victory would be in your hands or not. It's for all the world that it was in Craig Jones's. He has himself uh, some technical issues and that drops him uh, away from the field. But looking at where you are and just how important that victory was, especially compared to what has been a very strong start to your season, just how important was it to get back to split one? Um, yeah, that was it was good fun yeah i was definitely looking in all directions had no idea what was going on got offered a spotter but i was just like to my teammates you know guys just sort yourselves out 
prepare for the main race. Uh, so yeah, the race was super chaotic. I didn't know what was happening, and uh, but yeah, really bad luck to Craig because you know he's been around for years and I never really raced him, and it was really cool racing him today. So really bad luck for him to have a hardware issue because he was uh, looking in a good little position. So uh, yeah, good fun. Um, I got family over to the very last minute last night. I decided to pre-qualify and just didn't quite get there. So. Um, yeah, split two, and it was pretty cool to be in racing at the front, where it's, it's so hard to do it split one, isn't it? Well, let's talk about the differences between split two and split one racing, just for the moment, because sure. you're someone who's perennially a uh, split one racing driver, and you find yourself not qualified the best way, of course you have reason, but you find yourself in a field of drivers you don't normally race against, you're trying to understand how all these drivers race out on track it's how difficult to adjust your racing mentality in terms of knowing that there are different drivers who race differently compared to what you get on a general fortnight to fortnight basis yeah no good question i guess uh you know at any one time you're almost in this whole bracket of 20 different drivers you know if you've got the speed to be 10th you might be racing people from 5th to 25th you got the speed to be 30th you might be racing people from 20th to 40th or 50th and you know everyone's pretty quick now they've already got they all pretty much know what they want to do on track you know they all give room you know you know sure you know they'll opportunity you know they all, they all take the opportunities too though you know everyone's aggressive so you know there's not too much difference and you know half the time you're racing against people who sometimes you haven't raced before so you know the mentality is not really too much different to say starting to out for something well, that is very true, but let's also talk about one very, very important thing in terms of your race, and that was that defensive drive you had, or that offensive driving that you had right in the middle of the race, as well as moving towards the end and having to play defense. How does that um, idea of how you battle change between being the aggressor and being the uh, defender, as it were, especially when you have such an aggressive pack in the early stage? Yeah, they're not wrong, eh? Like, um, and it's, it's hard too because you do pre qualify, or if you don't do a lot of official races, like I don't really get to. Do. Uh, sometimes you just on your own, or you with a couple of teammates, and then all of a sudden you're surrounded by cars. So I felt like I had some pace, thought I had a bit of time to make a move, made a move, didn't pull off, got you know, got sighted out of exit of Moss, and you know, the other guys were pretty close. They did, you know, so of course they had to stick their car in the gap, good on him. And before I knew it, I was fourth or fifth. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, so defensive didn't work. And then I don't know when was I defensive. Um, yeah, uh, it's a bit frazzled. But then I just came out of the pits, no tyres, and I wasn't quite sure who had pitted, who hadn't. So yeah, just tried to best manage who was around me. Well, before we let you go after a big victory and get you on to racing action, any shout-outs or sponsors? Yeah, sure. You know, big shout out to TTR, you know, it's just always good fun hanging with them and uh, BRS, Gunston Valley, you know, being able to look at Madison's lines and data and just find out we're losing a bit of time. Uh, yeah, BRS is just invaluable for that, so uh, it's really helped me find a bit of speed early in the year after a two or three year break. And uh, yeah, just a shout out to them and thanks to everyone that puts on the show, really. No worries at all. Sean Kelly picked up a massive, massive race victory. The driver who came second, though, was just one second short. It's Adam Block, and he stood with Reese Gardner. He certainly is. Adam, welcome to the commentary box. You are of Club Carolina, so it's a bit of an early start for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's like 5 a.m. right now, but definitely worth it for a good V8 racing. Yeah, certainly. Uh, we saw you make an appearance at Oran Park, and uh, you didn't have the best luck there, but this has been a big turnaround for you with this podium finish. Yeah, uh, it's been a while. Didn't really get a chance to do many races between now and then, but um, yeah, I definitely had a lot better pace at uh, Most Fort, I think largely because um, I'm more familiar with Most Fort. Uh, I've raced here a good bit in the IndyCar. Um, yeah, so I guess my main struggle was trying to build a setup as a privateer, and I uh, get qualified, I'm not the best qualifier, but I knew once I got into the race I'd have decent pace. Um, yeah, and I did have decent pace, you know, made up like three spots, first lap, 
it's kind of aggressive, um, and then probably too aggressive, but uh, and then uh, yeah, just kind of chilled out for the first scent because uh, I wasn't had basically the same pace as everyone around me, so there wasn't really a point in fighting. Uh, and then was just looking to get as much clean track as possible for the pit cycle. And yeah, I got that. I got some good laps in pit at pretty much the right time. Um, so that that launched me from like seventh or sixth to second. Um, and I took tires and Sean didn't, so that was probably <clears throat> that's why he came out in front of me. Um, I definitely had a little bit more pace than him in the end, probably because of the tires, but um, obviously not enough to catch him. Well, nonetheless, uh, second place from ninth, um, definitely incident avoidance played a big part in that as well, because we saw a lot of drivers really overstepping the limits here today. Yeah, uh, I mean, this car is really easy to overdrive if you get slightly off the line, uh, especially a track like most sport that punishes every mistake, you know, grass runoff and walls not too far behind it. So, uh, yeah, little mistakes with your line, especially, you know, in traffic and stuff, it's really easy to do, um, and then you're off the road. So, yeah, um, yeah, just trying to keep it clean, be consistent. No one pretty good at that, so. Split one a goal for you for next round? Yeah, um, I'm... Hopefully I'll be able to make uh, most of the races, if not all the races, for the end of the season. Um, definitely in the Enduros. Trying to basically build up speed to be competitive in the Enduros. That's the goal. Um, but yeah, split one. You may be a privateer now, Adam, but uh, you must have a few people to give shout-outs to. Who are they? I um, just want to give a shout-out to all the IndyCar teammates I have at Power Slide. Um, so, yeah, they did a little bit of work on the setup, but obviously none of us really know what we're doing setting up this car. Yeah, it's a very big difference between uh, between an IndyCar and a, and a Australian touring car. Really, the only similarity between them is they got slicks. Thanks for joining us, Adam Blocker. Now, Sperry, it's time to get into that split one action. It certainly is. We are eight minutes and under away from the start of qualifying. And my goodness, is this going to be one of those weekend where anything really could happen if split two is anything to go by then this is something you've just got to keep your eyes focused on there are drivers up and down the field who want to make names for themselves you want to prove exactly why they are here and showcase just how good sim racing can be in australian touring cars and when you talk about drivers who are making pushes it has been a little bit surprising this round because there are some names that you wouldn't necessarily expect to see in here but first and foremost a big announcement came earlier this week that 055 riley preston would get back in behind an australian touring car which is the most surprising news i heard all week yeah certainly riley preston he's uh, back in the day famous for his open wheel exploits he was a, a driver in the uh, the driver's world championship and Got a bit of publicity there, but back in the complete opposite in terms of racing cars. It'll be interesting to see how he goes. It will be very interesting. Oh, he's good. We've also got Forza El Nabi, who has managed to switch up teams. He has left Trick Sim Sport, and maybe a little bit surprisingly, he has moved to Mega Black Racing. So Scotty Briscoe has picked up an absolute gem to partner with Thomas McMillan. And when you talk about the Enduros coming up as well, we're about four rounds away from Enduro season, which happens just after our driver choice track, which has been selected as Virginia International Raceway. Forza El Nabi and Thomas McMillan as a team pairing is probably going to be one of the most scariest pairings out there on the grid, if not El Nabi and Ross Rizzo work. Yeah, exactly. Of course, McMillan, he's, uh, he shows a great deal of potential, doesn't he? He's, um, he? he's aggressive, and he makes sure that he can get that thing around the track. Obviously, he's had his fair share of incidents, we know that, but he's given a lot of chances to improve in El Nabi. Well, he doesn't have much left to prove. He's a Bathurst winner. He is a Bathurst winner, and you don't get any higher in Australian sim racing than winning the 1,000, so... Borzan can be very happy about the way that he's been running and knows that he has got time on his side when the next round of Enduros starts to creep on in. Standings, though, are going to be up on your screen right around about now. And this, of course, is how everything is lining up at the moment here in B8 and Scops as we can get a magical thing on 
Coach Green right about now. I cannot see anything in terms of standing. So there are standing somewhere. There, there are going to be some uh, good uh, paces to go. As Ethan Grigg Golf is your leader. Yes. yes, he holds a 35-point lead over Jared Filser with Madison down uh, there in third position. Trans Tasman, Ian Ford has been patient and that has put him in fourth position with Forza El Navi moving away from Trick to Mega Black Racing in sixth position, Cooper, uh, fifth position, sorry, Cooper Webster, Jake Burton and Brent Thompson round out the top eight at the moment. Top four split by 100 points here, Reese. That can change so quickly. Absolutely, especially when you're talking about the top two specifically, Ethan Grigg Galt and Jared Philsell. I mean, Grigg Galt's form, especially compared to last season, it's just been a leap and bound. Philsell, it's been business as usual for him competing up the front most of the time, but we have seen a few chinks show in his armor. Madison down, he's always one of those drivers that's there or thereabouts, and he can get right in there and make sure he gets the position when something happens up the front. And Ian Ford, well, he's one of the most reliable sim racers in Australia. You can always count on him to get that thing home. Well, we always joke that Ian Ford is known as Mr. Dependable. You can depend on him to get a strong finish at pretty much any track out there at the moment. There are drivers in this practice who are showing great pace. Andrew Gilliam is in fifth position and surely is on the cusp of becoming one of the elite drivers. He's not quite there, I don't think, but certainly has all the credentials, Reese, to go out there and probably be a future champion. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen Gilliam getting up the top of the timesheets in practice more than once this season. I am really interested to see how the rest of his season goes. Um, of course, he's driving for Pursuit Sim Racing at the moment, but I'm sure there'll be a couple of those top teams spying that name up there and thinking, oh, maybe we should send him a private message. Maybe some private messages have already been sent, but other good drivers have been doing well. Sam Blacklock is been there or thereabouts but need to start kicking on this season for altus esports the warrens aren't in town for this one well ethan is but uh, uh for the moment at least it seems that dane is not but they are, well dane of course has his suspension to keep that in mind there are drivers who do want to prove themselves wayne burke in the 89 had a good last season but has just been a fits and starts driver for this season as has jackson susan and harlow jsh wants to prove that he is arguably the best driver when it comes to TTL Esports. And the issue is he's got a fight with Brady and another driver who uh, maybe isn't as here as other uh, races, and that's Richard Hampstead. Yes, indeed. Um, TTL Esports, they've had uh, a difficult last couple of years. Uh, results have been patchy for these guys. They're one of the oldest teams in Australian sim racing and uh, Mr. Harlow is one of their newest signings, along with Brady Myers, uh, looking for... Well, I guess they're, they're going through that transitionary phase that all of sim racing is at the moment. The old guard is, is starting to make way for these younger guys who come in with all of that aggressive, raw energy. And uh, speaking of aggressive, raw energy, Cooper Webster is one of those guys that's been able to harness it. He's going through Moss Corner right now. Yeah, and Cooper Webster has arguably been uh, the brightest star. They've... Uh, Dubbed him with Wonder Kid potential at Evolution Racing Team. They know what he's capable of. He's already got a race win to his name. He's the youngest race winner in V8 Scots. And that just shows you just how quick 37 can be on his day. But a minute to go until open qualifying. 20 minutes. No escape rule in full effect. You've got to bring it back to the pit. And more importantly, you've got to get the times in quickly as you can the track temperature is 42 degrees it is totally clear there is not a cloud you can find in the sky with winds blustering in from the south at about eight kilometers an hour gusting in and around that sort of area but reese has to be said we're looking at qualifying right now and at the moment half a second is splitting the top 15 plus drivers second means so much it certainly does, and wait till you see what the outlap is like around here. In V8 Scops, we see a big push, all the drivers going out of the pits at once, trying to find their way in the queue. Most sport, it's a very short track, under four kilometers, and it's got a high average speed, so you need to work to find that space and get a good lap in. 
the clock has almost hit zero. Just three, two, and one left. That's the practice session done. Now, watch the ocean of cars exit pit lane at the start of qualifying. Right at the death, Jordan Ross moved himself up into third position in that practice. But this is where you make your money now. It's qualifying time. And first out of the lane is always the most important. And who has the jump? Well, Brady Myers just about has it ahead of Ian Ford. And look at the melee of everyone trying to get out of pit road. Single file. Work it out, boys. You've all got to make sure that you get a good start going. Like some Riley Blythe. Jake Burton there, who's lost half of his sponsorship. So he'll be looking to try and uh, maybe get a few sponsors with this run that he's going to have here today at most sport. But everybody understands this is a track where you need to have draft and have draft incredibly, incredibly quickly. And every driver in this field here, Reese, knows that especially with hot conditions like they are at the moment, this opening lap is the most important of this qualifying session. Yeah, you won't see these guys working the tyres too hard because of this high track temp. They want to keep the tyres in a good operating range and preserve the front grip because if there's anything that you need at most sport, it is gripping those front end tyres. These corners are long, they're very high load, they're very fast, so you need to have as much tyre as you can possibly get. Well, Jake Burton is saying, well, I'm going to put my time in ahead of anybody else. And he's got Michael Talianjic following him in pursuit. So now for these two, they will be the bench setters. But Brady Myers, I think, dropped a little bit too far back, has dropped the ball in terms of needing a good time. Ethan Greg Galt has no drafting partners either. He will be in a little bit of a situation, as will Forzan El Nabi, who will not have draft, nor will Jared Philsell have any draft. So this is going to be... Very, very interesting as the Mark 1 car of Steven Varga will come out of pit road. Down turn two then for Jake Burton as we focus on number 33. Got himself a win last year at the wonderful Watkins Glen race. And that race arguably was a lot more different than a lot of others. But my word, did it prove a massive spectacle in the way that he had to try and win that race. Down the hill he goes, and then back up it again for Moss as the first unrepresentative times come in. Kyle Stokes is fast. It's on a 154.4. Of course, we know that is an outlap. He had to pass the strike coming through pit road. But Burton now under the Mobile One sponsorship bridge, now pushing away through Mario Andretti. Three corners remaining in terms of what he needs to find to make sure that he is absolutely A-OK -okay on this opening lap. 265 before smashing onto the brakes before hitting it down to 163. So 100 Ks lost into the left of turn nine. Now White's corner of turn 10. He's pulled away from Taliancic. We know that much. What's the benchmark to set here, Reese? Answer comes 18-1. Yeah, and Jake Burton goes instantly P1, but is instantly pipped by Ian Ford and Ethan Grigg Gold going into the 17s now. So more and more fast times coming in. Grigg Gold, your current pulse setter. Chris Robinson looking good in fourth and El Nabi putting himself in third. Bang. There's wow. Jared Philsell's yep, time. 117898. He breaks the 179 barrier. Jackson Susan Harlow, JSH moves up into third position there's the jackson we've been looking for for a very long time any time to prove yourself now is that time madison down is all the way back in 10th position at the moment in qualifying chris robinson is up to six as uh, he has been able to just put in a wonderful bit of lap times as his mark one car has been absolutely sensational so far so mark one proving they've got to turn a pace they absolutely do. So has one performance racing because Wayne Burke has put his car into fifth, the number 89. Fantastic job from him. The person that we are currently looking at coming down the back straight, Chris Robinson, he sits in seventh. We'll see if he comes into the pits, but uh, Jared Felsell, I'm pretty sure will be bringing this one in this time because the track is hot enough that you probably won't be able to get... Um, Oh yeah, actually, we have just been reminded of a very important rule in this format because it's a two race format. You have to set two representative lap times. Your fastest lap time is putting you where you are in race one. Your second fastest time determines where you start in race two. Very, very true. Of course, we're only privy 
to those race one lap times as we get an eye on what Jared Philsell's second lap was, which was an 8-1, which is fantastic. That would have been good enough for third position with everything he's got as Jackson Tucson Harlow would be second on second lap time representatives. He just did an 8-2 that last time by. So drivers looking to get those laps in and they know that the race format compared to split two ever so slightly shorter it's three laps shorter but they have an unrestricted fuel tank they will not have to come in and make that stop chris cox said though he comes over the line does 89 that's good enough for 37 so uh, he is ahead of brenton o'brien uh, chris radisic who's not set a time michael cracknell who's not set a time and go lee lee ellis who has also not set a time at the moment but my goodness me, your top 20 are split by seven tenths of a second at the moment. Anything, and I mean anything, is really possible at the moment. And it's so weird to see Madison down in 11th position, Gilliam's there in 13th, and Sean Kelly, let's not forget, who was in Super Split 2, he's qualified at the moment in 17th position race. Yeah, and in a, a field this big, we've got um, 41 cars in the server at the moment that is a really good effort from sean to put it smack dab in the midfield and we get a good view of uh, lee ellis's visor there it's always an uh, <clears throat> eye-catching design ha 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 everybody laugh let's see how he goes through the last few turns here he doesn't currently have a time set and he's looking nice and smooth through these last few turns Fifth, one minute 15 margin covered this looks like a one minute 18 five for him and that's not bad at all. That puts him directly in the midfield once again, 21st. Look, though, like uh, Lee Ellis has had a lot of coffee this morning, I, uh, this evening, sorry. I, I don't know what it is about him, but... Yeah, uh, I can't tell either. No, he looks very alert for some reason. Uh, but he's, he's having a good run at the moment, and 21st will put him with Corey Preston, Brenton Hobson, Emily Jones, Brett Locks. Oh, Brett Locks, actually, surprisingly, found the order in 23rd, as we do have... Fours and El Navi out there on a flying lap at the moment. New team, Mega Black Racing, and look to try and make that push. He's in sixth position right now. He's uh, his third team in the space of 14 months. So we'll see what Fordsan's going to be able to do here. Just racking up the pace, looking to push his emphasis forward. And he is looking at turn eight. He's got a little bit of traffic in front. Can he just nip a little bit of draft off of Ian Ford? Well, he'll try as Ford goes on an out lap now and looks to set his next flying lap so El Navi will make that push to the line 81 his best at the moment and he manages 18 3 which is good second lap time yeah 100% for a second lap time very good Madison down coming down the Andretti straight away uh, once again currently sitting in 11th which is not where we would usually expect him he's normally challenging within the top four maybe even the top three so very abnormal from the past series champion and of course uh, racing in official uh, iRacing series as well he's won many a championship so he's got the numbers to back himself up and it's an 18-2 for his second lap time it's better in terms of his pace it's not better in terms of his position which stays at 11th position despite finding half a tenth of a second's improvement normally that gets you at least one pace, uh, place or two but he's still behind jordan and ross by a good maybe 20 uh, quarter of a tenth of a second that he needs to find so still not enough for madison he's got to find a bit more and these sorts of tracks here like most but reminds you ever so slightly reese of say a barber gallo or something like that as now uh, ethan greg Gold has got himself an 18 flat, which is good enough for the second race pole position. So a great lap from Ethan Grigg Gold. He is really racking up pressure on Jared Philsell. I think these two are going to be even. Yeah, good consistency from Ethan Grigg Gold. Let's see how Philsell responds on this particular lap. Crossing the start finish line, he does another lap below 118. That's a 17.9. So oh. he's just snatched that away once again. But I do agree, you are right. This track um, does resemble uh, a few tracks that we have down in Australia. Barbagallo, uh, yeah, I, I guess so. It's fast and flowing, but this track is a sight more bumpy. Than, uh, than my home track. Very, very true that. But 
these drivers know that they have to master the bumps and every little bump they can feel on their force feedback and their steering wheels as Emily Joan uh, in the number 68 machine will look to make some progress. She was so happy that she was able to get in her time uh, of a uh, one eight one when it came to her pre-qualification. She was absolutely stoked and she's gone and done an 18.6 that last time by, which is a very good time for her second qualifying lap. So 20th position for her at the moment. Susan Harlow though, let's not count out him. JS has uh, just run himself off the track here. I think he's just trying to make sure that he is just out of the way of everyone as he just slows it down and looks to keep on pushing. One driver who has not, or two drivers, sorry, who have not set the time, uh, Michael Cracknell and Chris Radisic. Uh, is the two who have not gone out there and set times, but both of them know uh, that things have been going on for them as they've got times. It's also worth reminding that there was one driver who took an escape early on. I think that was um, Michael Cracknell, I'm not too sure, um, and that will be qualifying done for whoever didn't take that, uh, whoever did take that tug. Yeah, that's the reason the no escape rule exists for anyone who's new to V8 Scops. Uh, usually in sim racing, if you make a mistake or crash, you just stop by the side of the track, hold down the escape button, and you just put straight back to the garage. But we don't do that in this series. You've got to return back to the pits, and if you escape without asking for permission, then you can't go back out again. Them's the rules. Them's are the rules. As drivers now are over halfway through qualifying your top ten are as follows. Phil Cell, Greg Gold, Jackson, Susan Harlow. Then you've got Ford and Burke, the top five. El Nabi, Robinson, Burton, who we are on board with in eighth position, crossing the start of finish line, looking to improve on an 18-1, does an 18-2. That's a very good time for a second lap. Sam Blacklock and Jordan Ross round out the top 10. I'd say that is a beautiful top 10, but again, I have to say it, Chris Robinson has found a worldie here. He absolutely has a fantastic run from him in that 04 machine. He sits in the pits right now as we look at Forzan El Nabi making his way through the final turns once more. He's currently sitting in sixth position. What's he going to be this time? It's an 18.6 for him. Uh, not quite up to where his previous laps were, but at least he's showing you can still lap uh, within a few tenths in these conditions as the track evolves. I've got him down as an 18.339, which is an improvement on his second lap by a few hundredths of a second. And those could be the vital hundredths that he needs to make that push. Look at the middle of the pack, though. It is a who's who uh, in the middle of the pack. Ross Rizzo finds himself in 30th position. He will tell you first he is a racer more than a qualifier in the Trick Sim Sport car. You've got Riley Preston just in front of him. Then you've got Jacob Knight, Marlon McMullen, Michael Barron, Riley Blight. Like Tani Ancic, Corey Preston, Lee Ellis, all of that sits within about a tenth. And that goes all the way to Brett Loxon as Kyle Stokes, I do believe, has gone up to 18th position. Or well, someone else has just moved up through the order as Whoa, uh, up to 16th Corey. Corey Preston. Yeah, and right off the track at turn two goes Corey Preston as well. That's a bit of a wild ride, but he's managed to keep it out of the barrier. Well done. Yeah, fair play to Corey. He's got himself up in that 16th position he hasn't had much luck yet this season he wants to change that he's dedicating a lot of time to change the uh, I, I'd say perception around him uh, that he um, unfortunately does have with him but he is starting to prove now that he's got good pace and an 18365 he will be happy with that that is right in the mix there he's just behind Thomas Hintz who is in 15th and Thomas Hintz has really come alive in the last month or so. He's really found pace, and I'm excited to see what a Thomas Hintz in the right mindset is able to do. Yeah, Hinzy's uh, had a rough time in the last year, and uh, it's been good to see how he's improved himself as he improves. Uh, Madison improves, actually, to fourth place. Have a look at oh. that. That's Where the Madison that... down we know. Where did that come from, Madison? This track has no characteristics of being an improvement times if he got that time in earlier he may have found two tenths but madison down now up to fourth place and now as the leading light at the trans tasman racing team it is madison's team 
he knows now he's got a lot of work to do in this race. Three positions are not the easiest to find around here, but he is crucially 5,000 clear of Ian Ford, who he is fighting with in the championship. Yes, indeed. It's uh, it, that, it, and, it, and it's part of that bigger picture that you got to think about, right? It's not just about the qualifying session on the day. You have to think about the numbers, how they stack up. What am I going to have to do in the race if I want to beat this guy? How, what, you know, you need to figure out where you're going to be at the end of the season and try and execute that as best you can. Cooper Webster, meanwhile, lucky 13th. Does he improve? Yes, he does. Good time. 18-2. 18-2 is good enough for 12th place for Cooper Webb. So maybe by the way that this track has rubbered in Reese, there could be potential to find some time in the last five minutes. Yes, indeed. Usually uh, in sessions like this, we see all the fastest times being set at the start. But that's not the case here, which is quite interesting. The track uh, had moderate usage, about 50% rubber buildup in the practice session and of course that track state is carried over into qualifying and the race so the drivers obviously finding that that's working well for them it is and they are finding some beautiful times out here but it remains unchanged for the time being at the top five four minutes to go here at Mosport for qualifying and every driver now is just trying to latch onto someone else get a lovely bit of draft and just try and run away with something that they are available to find. And there are a few drivers up and down this field who want to just find that extra tenth that means so much. You've got the top 16 split by just half a second on this track. So anything's possible. And I'd say any one of 16 drivers, depending on how this racing is going to go, has a shot of winning. Yeah, 100%. you got to remember this is a flat-out sprint race as well, so there'll be a bit more of an aggression factor up. Forza Nabi did improve on that one. He now sits seventh, four thousandths of a second improvement. Meanwhile, his former teammate, Ross Rizzo, last time he crossed the line, he's put himself up into the top 20. Has done very well, has Ross Rizzo. That is exactly... 20th position i got a message from him uh the day before uh this race and in pre-qualification he was frustrated he was angrily putting time after time after time in and he was looking at stephen varga going oh come on i know i'm as quick as you and he was pretty much running in his draft getting quicker and quicker and quicker and he finally belted out a time that got him safe but there in 20th position he could be very happy in the trick car with exactly what he has been able to do in terms of that and in terms of where Steven Varga is, he's down on an 18-7 as we continue to see just how tight and narrow and how difficult things are as Andrew Gilliam remains in 13th. That's actually an improvement. He was in 14th before that lap, but uh, he just set that time. So uh, Gilliam continuing to make those little steps up the order. I'm really interested to see what he can do in the race. Yes, and... Andrew Gilliam in 13th. He knows that improvement is going to help him a lot in terms of his second qualification time as well. Keep that in mind as 10th split up to third is a tenth of a second and a bit of spare change. The fourth is next much as now everyone is looking to try and make that push and some drivers are looking to try and get those times in the way that they know that they are going to be able to do. Cooper Webster pulls off to the side. Thomas Hinn's looking for times. As is Marlon McMullen in 22nd. He's definitely got some pace. He's been saying, I'm a privateer and I'm still trying to figure things out. But ultimately, 22nd, middle of the pack for Marlon. Was hoping mainly for top 15. That probably would have been his ideal aim. Yeah, exactly. McMullen, he's uh, another one of those drivers that's been driving these cars for a very long time, and he won't be happy with that, I know it. Chris Coxhead, uh, just inside the top 30 as well. It's getting harder and harder to find those times as he comes out of the final corner. What's this going to be? It's going to be a mid-18 for him, and uh, that's going to help him slightly. The entire field, though, covered by under nine-tenths of a second. Well, that just shows you how quick this field is. All 39 drivers who have set a time are within a second and all have a reason to battle it out. One minute remains, though, here in qualifying. And when they cross the line, they have until the end of their laps to complete. So the last one past the post, arguably, could be in the prime position. 
to make this one work. Sean Kelly's day is done. He dives down onto pit road. He will not find any more times. Ross Rizzo will cross the line. He will go on an outlap now, and this will be his final chance to make something happen. Andrew Gillian's on track. Wayne Burke's on track, as is Burton on track, as well as the likes of Madison Down searching for a time. He's got 20 seconds, and he may be able to find one more. Someone who won't is Andrew Fraser. He's making way onto pit road. Phil Sell thinks he's clean and fine. He will dive down on the lane and will not go any quicker. 10 seconds remain. Madison Down will not find a time, but Tani Ancic behind will try with five seconds. He'll make it across the line. Oh. He will be the last driver across the line, and he oh, will awful. not find improvements. So as in comes the majority oh, of the field. Sperry! Look, look, there's a big incident out there. Dylan Shepard stopped on uh -oh. track. My goodness, that was uh, very suboptimal. Yeah, with Jacob Knight, let's get a uh, Motum Simulations replay on that one. I completely missed it. So we'll see exactly how this one came about. So Jacob Knight's coming in and oh, he's just unsighted. Completely unsighted on Shepard. He's just taking his line and that is muscle memory, I think, for Jacob Knight. He's taking his natural line. Oh, wait, there's a car spread eagle across the circuit as uh, Shepard just had the big moment, walls it or noses it into the wall, noses it in again, not off the racing line. That was racing action. There would have been a caution as El Nabi crosses the line, looking to find times. It's an 18.299. That will not be good enough for improvement as the final few drivers start making their way to the line. Brady Myers is there in 14th position. He just wants a 1,000 to gain himself a position. Whoa. And he has gone to third. I'm on third. third. What? Oh, my wow. goodness. Talk about last gasp. Goodness me. That's fantastic from e, uh, Ian Ford. And Ethan Grig Galt uh, back down there in the 17s as well. So it's one, two, and three for Evolution Racing Team at the end of this session. Well, let's get ourselves then official qualifying results then. And it is Jared Phil So who's got pole on a 117.898. Ethan Grigg got the championship leader just behind in second. But Ian Ford at the death, making third position work for him. Jackson Susan Harlow, JSH in fourth with Madison Down in fifth. Wayne Burke will start this one in sixth. The fourth row consists of Forza El Nabi and Jordan Ross with Chris Robinson and Jake Burton rounding out the top. In 11th, we'll be starting Sam Blacklock and Cooper Webster alongside him. Andrew Gilliam starting lucky 13th. Brady Myers for TTL Esports alongside him. Brett Loxton, one of the drivers that's shown great pace, particularly in Canada, starts 15th with Hins and Preston beside. Uh, Sean Kelly, our split two winner, starts 18th. Ethan Warren and Kyle Stokes rounding out the top 20 there. Ross Rizzo plays Blackjack with Chris Coxhead with two little ducks. Oli in 23rd with Marlon McMullen alongside him. Row 13 consists of Brenton Hobson and Thomas McMillan. And failing to get away from Thomas McMillan is Emily Jones in 27th position. Michael Barron and Michael Taliancic, 28th and 29th. David Sanford starts this one from position 30. Following them, Riley Blythe of ERT and Jacob Knight of Exto Gaming. Riley Preston starts 33rd. Brian Borg, Dylan Shepard, Andrew Fraser, Stephen Varga, Brenton O'Brien and Trans Tasman Racing's Kurt Stenberg rounding out the field with Michael Cracknell not setting a time. Nor is Chris Radisic, but for the time being, they are, I guess, just getting away, ready to grid up as I forget how to English just for a second. A lot on the line here. Middle part of the championship. This is where you build your run for a title push. If you don't have a good middle part of the season, momentum is against you for the finish. You may leave things a little too little, a little too late. They have two minutes to grid up or they start from that dreaded place known as Pit Road. And all of these drivers will be looking at the iRacing gantry, waiting to make sure that they get that push further forward. Keep an eye out though on these top three. They will want to make sure that nobody behind them gets in Team emphasis comes first from these three, Phil Cell, Greg Galt, and Ford. But JSH, Madison Down, Wayne Burke, Forza and El Narby all have something to prove as two minutes comes up on the clock. Lights will come on, and in just a few seconds, first race of the night at Most Sport gets 
underway. And it's a slow start from Susan Harlow. Straight across will come Wayne Burke. He will make a way through a terrible, terrible start. Phil Cell absolutely perfect. He got the most oh, three amazing wide. edge. An instance already. Four wide in the middle of the pack. Five wide in the middle of the pack. Oh, Bang, yeah. Across they go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Everyone getting caught up in the middle of the pack. Big, big wreck as they go through. Caution comes out. Given by Michael Korolev. And three laps get lopped off of the massive chunk at the start. Well, they made it a few hundred meters more than split two. I guess that's an improvement. Well, it just proved they're better drivers, but a massive, massive wreck. And all of that was caused by the start. And it's worth going back and looking at the very start. Wayne Burke was caught up in all of that, as was Jackson Susan Harlow. So this all happens with Wayne Burke right at the front of this one. So Burke trying to make way through on Madison down, trying to go around the outside. El Nabi gets there, down on the inside, a bit of contact, and then there's more contact. Jordan Ross goes into the wall. Now there's Fred Eagle, four wide, five wide, a tap there from Sam Blacklock. Uh, that one to Jordan and Ross, I do believe it was. And then the Mark 1 car of Robinson goes around. Everyone now has to just try and find a way through at a very difficult point in time where there is no runoff area. There is a caution and a massive, massive wreck to start off racing here tonight at Mo Sport. Yeah, let's have a look at what happened as we focus on Chris Robinson. He was the one who was going three wide there with, uh, with Blacklock. And it just, you can just see it all started because they were trying to check up and avoid other cars in the blind spot. But just little bits of rear end contact here and there, swinging the cars out on cold tires. And from then on, it was a chain reaction that went all the way down through the field. I have never seen a wreck that big in my year and a bit of covering races here with V8 Scott and, of course, Tim Speed TV on the iRacing Esports Network. That was a massive, massive accident. And that is actually part of the reason why Sport is such a deadly track, because it's just one small little bit, one small bit of contact, and the chain reaction turns massively. Let's just get a rundown wow. now of how the field stands. That is Jared Filsell who leads this one with Ethan Grigg Galt second. Ian Ford is third with Madison down fourth. It's El Nabi in fifth. Now look at the gainers here through all of this. Jake Burton up to sixth. Andrew Gilliam in seventh. Kyle Stokes up 12 in eighth. Michael Taliancic up 20 in ninth. Dylan Shepard up 25 in tenth. Yeah, awesome numbers from a few of those people. And uh, that past modem replay that we just saw on the broadcast showed how lucky Andrew Gilliam got. Remember, he started lucky 13th, but he somehow managed to avoid all of that and is now in P7. Pace, of course, behind Simon Mazoma at the moment, but look at who is down on pit road. All of these drivers are absolutely spent and I am not surprised to see maybe a dozen vehicles at the moment on pit road after that massive massive accident it does thin the field down and for those drivers who got involved they do have that second chance in that second race because of that qualifying position but this was not the way that many drivers wanted to start this race but it does remain evolution racing team one two three at the front of this field and that's pretty much what you want if you're Evolution Racing Team. These guys have had uh, the turn of form uh, of the series history, I think. They started out as one of those uh, ch challenges to the likes of Trans-Tasman and TTL, but they gradually built up a good base of drivers, and now they seem to be the dominant team in this championship. But a uh, little bit of touring going on. They're going a bit slower than they probably want to at this stage. They are, and there are four drivers who have not made it back out again. Those include Jacob Knight, David Sanford, Brenton Hobson, and Marlon McMullen. Everybody else is desperately trying to get their lap and try and just claw it back with as much damage they can repair as possible. There will be a lot of walking wounded at the back of this field. The good news is it will be a single file restart for this one with everybody cleared up and everybody ready we will be getting back out again for racing we assume at the end of this lap Filster will have an easier time now pulling away from Ethan Grigolt than he did going into turn number one but Madison down in fourth Forza and Elnabi fifth Jake Burton sixth 
all of whom have something to prove. Andrew Gilliam, definitely something to prove in seventh. As well as Kyle Stokes in the triple eight car, who is ironically in eighth position at the moment. All to play for then here as we have ourselves 22 to go at the strike. Yeah, and it'll be a very fast uh, 22 to go, maybe even 21, depending on when the safety car decides to come in. Simon Mazomo, of course, up there in the double zero. We do have a manual admin controlled safety car in uh, this series. So it'll be up to their discretion when the caution period ends. We'll be at the end of this lap being uh, adjudicated by Michael Korolev at uh, control for V8 GOPS. He will be looking to try and make sure that everything is very nice and safely run as they get themselves back racing action again. A lot of drivers out of position. Kurt Stenberg up to 15. French O'Brien's up to 14th position. Steven Varga is up to 17th, as is Riley Blythe to 16th. Not many positions for Sean Kelly or Thomas Hinz, but both of them still made gains. Massive losses, though, for the likes of JSH, Jackson Susan Harlow, Wayne Burke lost position. Cooper Webster, Chris Robinson, Brett Loxton, Sam Blacklock, Brady Myers, all of whom ran themselves in troubles at the beginning. But Jared Philsell now controls the pace of this one. They look to try and get back out and going again and getting some good racing action in. What can the reigning two-time champion do compared to Ingrid Gold? What can the young pretender, EGG, find himself to get with Ian Ford? There's the jump, and it's well coordinated as well, but Filsa able to just get the power down and get a couple tenths as we go green once again. Here at Mosport, one vehicle will come out of pit road. That's Jordan Ross, and he will probably wait for the whole field to stream by as he finds himself lapsed down as now everybody tries to find themselves a way through on the brakes into turn two. Jake Burton can't quite find the move that he's trying to make as he looks to get past Ford Zano Nabi in the Mega Black racing car as he now dives to the inside. It's half covered, well covered by El Nabi actually there as he's now starts to drop a tenth back to Madison Down who's already harassing Ian Ford. Looking good up the front uh, for these guys. Phil Sell and Ethan Griggolt starting to streak away now, but down and Ford going right at it. And have a look at Burton. Very aggressive on the entry to Moss Corner once again. Bumper to bumper through the second bit. Awesome racing so far. This is the kind of start that we wanted to see. It very much is the kind of start we wanted to see. But now look at this. This is where the draft is going to come fully into effect. They start pushing their way towards turn eight at the end of the Mario Andretti straight and they're not quite in position to make that move you need a fantastic run to make that happen and Burton was not able to find it also Michael Barron trying to get on the aggressive back Whoa, He's got Sean Kelly in front and Burton Whoa. has himself a huge moment and he gets past El Nabi though with that big dive down to the inside so great work from Burton just about to dry Gilliam will say cookies that's mine and now the next positions are starting to get a little further away as battles up and down the field happen yeah, one of those battles up and down the field that we're looking at is looking quite interesting. I think that's Ethan Warren in the Altus car there, focusing on Brian Borg. Outside into turn two, doesn't always work. He managed to get through, though. Look at that. Oh, really whoa, whoa, hold it. Oh, no, he's gone through as well as, oh, my word. Almost a bit of concert there as we're looking at Stephen Varga at the moment, heading through uh, Quebec corner and trying to get that power down to make that move. Ethan Warren, there's Thomas McMillan as well. We're on board with, they're all fighting. Meanwhile, Gilliam and El Nabi are having an absolute ding dong of a battle at the moment at the front of this field as El Nabi is forced to go to the outside here to try and defend this one. What can Gilliam do as he puts the power down? Just getting a bit of side draft as well that's going to be able to push him a little bit further forward behind that Carl Stokes and Michael Taliancic have that battle Gilliam gets decisively through as they head through turn number eight as does Kyle Stokes holding the position off against Taliancic top five though are firm breakaway yeah, very firm breakaway. Burton's just holding on to the back of this one as Down continues to harass Ford. But what we're looking at right now is the battle further down the field. Brenton O'Brien and Michael Barron going at it with uh, Sean Kelly. And I believe that's uh, Kurt Stenberg. It is Trans-Tasman Racing Sandwich. It's double layer. It is a double layer sandwich. Almost contact behind that as well as Riley. life 
us couldn't oh, look out. to get what they have them as they are having moments there up and down this field. And that very nearly ended in a bit of disaster in the middle of that pack as we were continuing to see that battle as O'Brien now has to find a bit of gap as Kelly has gone through. Hint has broken away now in this one. But to the front, we need to go because the front four have remained largely unchanged at the moment in this one. They have just kept themselves a similar gap, maybe in fought the struggler at the moment. But Ethan Gricot is proving at the moment here at the front of this one, lap six, that he is not falling away from Jared Philsell at any stretch of the imagination. He's kept that gap for the last three laps within four tenths of a second. Yeah, he's very consistent, is Ethan, behind Jared, and I think the draft is definitely helping him there. Jared Philsell, we know from past experience, he loves to put the hammer down and gap the rest of the field, but it's not happening this season as uh, some of us might have expected. So that top two starting to form their own little Noah's Ark group as uh, Ian Ford continues to fall back into the clutches of Madison Down. Have a look at this on board from Kurt Stenberg trying to get his way past Brenton O'Brien. The wonderful double apex turn two here. Might he be able to hold one up the inside here? Nope, he's gonna try around the outside. That sometimes works too. It was partially defended by Brenton O'Brien there as he took a more shallower line into Quebec corner as they head themselves through turn number four down the hill and looking to try and go for turn five. Does O'Brien get aggressive? No, he doesn't. And they're getting company on the rear of this train in the middle of the pack, mind you because behind this is Brian Borg and Michael Cracknell who are all there, all trying to get themselves through. As we go back to our leaders at the moment, Greg Galt and Phil Self trying to go well. Madison down though, is desperately trying to find a way past Ian Ford. His race is falling away as he now looks to try and make something happen. Angling for that inside at the final corner, just not able to have the conviction to send as Ian Ford does enough to defend the position for at least one lap longer. And conviction is what you need at that last corner because it's not much of a run to it. Um, this is a replay, having a look at uh, Sean Kelly. Something has gone wrong for him. He lost two spots here and it looks like he's just slow down the straight for some reason. He's got big damage on the back of his car, on, on the, well, actually all over his car. So not sure what's going on with Kelly there, but either way, he's had to lose it. And what's happened here to Andrew Gilliam? Well, Andrew Gilliam at the moment finding himself on an island on his own in sixth position. He's unable to really chase down the field, so nothing has happened uh, to Gilliam by the looks of things right now. Carl Stokes still under pressure from Michael Talianchik. This is the battle, eighth and ninth. Don't count Dylan Shepard out. He's there in tenth position, but he's hemorrhaging time almost to Thomas Hinds. He actually gained two tenths uh, last time by. So the top ten, very much undecided at the moment. As this racing goes on at the end of lap number eight and still drivers just trying to play that patience game trying to work out when is the right time to go out be aggressive and make some moves nothing in the top five kyle stokes under pressure though look at this heavy over the curb tally Antic trying to get away through in the triple seven and on the power on the exit can he find a an angle into turn number one not enough run yeah, well, you can see that it's a very wide entry into Turn 1. It's tempting to chuck one up the inside, but we already saw in Split 2, it doesn't always work. You have to really put a lot of trust in um, in the guy you're battling with. And obviously, this, uh, this being online racing, you uh, don't quite have that same level of, uh, of physical grounding that you would have in real-world racing, but it just allows you pushed a lot more as Kelly is the fastest car on track at the Andrew moment. Gilliam. Andrew Gilliam is the fastest driver on track at the moment. He did a 118.6 that last time by. That was quicker than everybody in the pack in front by a tenth of a second. The bad news is going to continue to catch at that sort of rate. It's going to take him uh, a good 19 laps to get himself back further forward and it will be 19 laps to the end of this race and a lot less than that so he's not chasing enough here comes tally Ancic, though looking for eighth position down the inside at turn number eight and if he's able to make this work this will be fantastic to move him up 21 positions stokes defending on that inside tally Ancic just unable to put the power down he was stuck on the outside in the marbles and really could not do anything to get the power back forward and to make that move 
Yeah, easy thing to do here. Uh, the driver's just working out uh, the track at the moment. As Madison Down and Jake Burton are starting to come together, you can see Ian Ford, he isn't having as much trouble with Down as he was when we last looked at him. Burton, on the other hand, starting to make this a three-car battle. Very much making it a three-car battle at the moment at the front of your field. Your top seven split by five seconds out on track and that goes all the way back to Ford's Mel Narby your top five split by just 2.2 as Jared Philsell holds half a second's lead over Ethan Greg Golton not much has changed despite that a little bit further down massive pack uh, going on and someone who is motoring through it is Kurt Stenberg at the moment he's up into 12th he's looking at Brenton O'Brien for 11th and just in front of that is the top 10 that magical top 10 being safeguarded by the 043 of Dylan Shepard yeah, the 043 of Dylan Shepard that is missing the front bumper. That's a very sore-looking OPR trouble. car. And Hins, yeah, he's dropping straight line speed a bit there. Not quite sure what's going on, but, you know, on the run-up to those penultimate turns... Look at the rear. Oh, yeah, right that rear, rear does not look good. Yeah, that's... Uh, he's had a bit of help with that one, I think. He's had a lot of help with that one, I think. Thomas Hins, for all the pace that he has, nothing you can do when you've got a right rear that looks really out of shape like that so he will have a lot of work to do if he is to pull himself back in and to get something working out of this race top five remain unchanged only 24 drivers now currently on the leading lap so this one is a very much uh, going to be about who can just make a one position here a one position there everyone using that very wide line and almost a little tap on the back of madison down from jake burton former teammates those two no love lost so burton now trying to make sure that 33 gets past two sevens absolutely as uh, as burton loved to say when uh, when he was in the commentary booth at sim speed tv a few years back these guys, former teammates. And Burton looks like he has that front end grip down pat. Madison down on the other hand, working that wheel very hard. And Burton right on the bumper in these last couple of turns. Got slightly choked up there through turn number nine. Was unable to put the power down to attack at turn 10 and make that move. Little look at turn one, but that's contrasting lines there. Madison taking a wider entry to maximize the exit, heading to Clayton's corner of turn number two. Ian Ford now has seven tenths of a second, but he has lost 1.1 to Ethan Greg Galt and Jared Philsell. Greg Galt has just been equal to Philsell in every sense of the word through the course of the racing that we have seen. Brenton O'Brien, though, has jumped inside the top 10. He's got past Dylan Shepard, and he has done so uh, on the run to turn number eight. So O'Brien getting it done around the outside on the Mario Andretti straight. Dylan Shepard struggling with damage now as Kurt Stenberg now looms in for an 11th place at the moment. Yes, indeed. Uh, Kurt Stenberg right on the back of Dylan Shepard coming into Moss Corner. And Brenton O'Brien ahead of both of these guys now. So Stenny has got his work cut out from here. Shepard didn't get the best exit, though. We might see a move here. Have a look at the run that Stenberg has. That front bumper really missing straight line speed as uh, we briefly take a look at what's happening down at Moss. But that's position taken for Stenberg already. It is. And on the break goes Kurt Stenberg. He's on a stormer. That is position 28. Uh, he has gained in this event so looking at Brenton O'Brien who started one position ahead of him and they are very much equal in terms of the way that they are racing right now at this stage fifth and sixth oh sorry sixth and seventh are very much uh, on their own little battles but to the front because for the first time Ethan Greg Galt has brought the gap under four tenths of a second they cross the line it was three tenths and a bit of change. Greg Galt is starting to fire up. He's very good on the tires, and we know how good he is on tires. On the brakes, into Moss, and if he can just get the power down, Phil Cell may be under trouble. We are over half distance, and now Greg Galt is starting to turn the screw and trying to challenge the champion and the main challenger to his championship lead. Well, you know what? Uh, you were talking about making mistakes. I saw Phil Sill get a bit of extra oversteer on the exit of Moss, and that's well and truly draft there for Ethan Grigolt. They are right 
uh, they're almost bumper to bumper now. Half a car length between these guys. So Phil Cell, his rears, they, they look like they're starting to go. A bit more bucking and diving in the car's behavior than Grid Galt. Uh, the Eggman just keeping it nice and smooth behind the uh, reigning champion. Another tenth locked off. Gap down to two. So Grid Galt is trying to set this one up as quickly as he can as he looks to try and test the metal of the reigning champion as now through turn two of Clayton's into Quebec of three and now he start thinking about Greg Gold and how he can just eat the damage to a minimum with Phil Cell just so ruthless at the last round of the championship how brilliant he has been since Oren Park Ethan Greg Gold knows he's got to find something and he takes a very shallow line in and that will open up the corner for the exit which again just loses a tenth there getting caught in some dirty air and that will not help him at all not much dirty air but enough that means he can't make the move that's it these cars aren't the most aero dependent things in the world but it does still make a difference at a high speed track like this big draft once again all the way back up to his teammate this is a proper battle for the lead here between two teammates they haven't got long left uh, nine laps to go when they cross the line next time rapidly 11. running out for both of these guys my apologies yeah. 11. yeah 11 laps so there's still some time but not much they take contrasting lines again into turn number one a little wider there from Greg Galt who's trying to open out the exits as much as possible to make a line work that gap is under two tenths he is running the bumper now you could say of Jared Philsell he knows how important that this maneuver is going to be in terms of his race and his championship and how psychological getting a pass on the champion is going to be what can he do now through four this is one of the places you can make a move at turn number five can he be brave enough on the brakes definitely not close enough to make that happen and in fact Filsa had a very good opening section there was able to pull out that tent but Grid Galt has a good exit there only a car length between them now and the draft will come into play as they make their way through but Madison Dow Ooh. drops the spot there as they head through Moss so he makes the mistake unforced error runs wide misses his braking points slightly hits the curb and gets unsettled and there goes through uh, Jake Burton but still Grid Galt unable to find what he needs and he's all over Phil Cell. Yeah, certainly is. We're taking a look at the modem simulation replay now of Down's move. Yeah, he just pushed too hard, went off into the gravel trap, and as you love to say, Sperry Burton went cookies, that's mine. Tally Ansich uh, getting uh, up a few positions Almost. as well. Oh, just got it. He's just oh. got it there. Carl Stokes was forced to double take the corner and Tally Ansich fantastically picks up that position and gains one more Riley Preston though is stopped on the side of the road oh, here at turn yes. number two and that looks very very heavy in terms of damage I wonder if a safety car could get called for that another vehicle goes off though and I believe that is Jordan Ross who is also lap traffic but have the teammates come together yeah not quite sure he's um we're just seeing that replay there of Preston coming down let's have a look at what happened here Riley Preston was in 26 at the time and Bang, engine, safety car. Oh, yep. Oh, there we go. Caution out. So we got two more cautions here. Oh, there you go. There's a little puff of smoke on the exit of turn two, of turn one. Sorry. That's a real shame for Preston. And Jordan Ross as well getting caught out. So uh, Jordan Ross, both Evolution Racing Team cars going. And there's the second uh, little puff of smoke as Ross's engine decides it wants to expire. So Evolution Racing Team will have to go back uh, to their garage and work things out but that really does shake things up it gives another life to certain people here in this race and Ethan Griggolt knows I've lost three laps in this battle but I am all over the back of Jared Filsa and I know that I can go out there and make that move so not really too many changes but that field is going to close in and I think the driver who's going to get the biggest benefit out of all of this is Andrew Gilliam who was in sixth and was unable to close down Madison down enough. Yeah, exactly. On this restart, Gilliam needs to be right on it. He will have those cars in front of him, and he has to make sure he's there if anything happens. And uh, knowing this field, there's going to be some big moves being made in those last couple of laps. There certainly is, as those two Evolution Racing 
cars will now have to put the spare engine in and get their next race working for them or there will be minimum points and it will be one of their three drop rounds that they will be using. They have three drop rounds in this championship. None of those can be used in the final race of the season. So they are looking at just trying to be as consistent as possible over the course of this racing season. But your top 10 are as follows. Jared Philsell leads this one and there is one vehicle in the middle of that and that is Jacob Knight who is now effectively hindering Ethan Griggolt at the moment. Ian Ford finds himself in third with uh, Madison, uh, sorry, Jake Burton in fourth. Madison Down is in fifth. It's Gilliam sixth. El Nabi is seventh. It's then Taliancic, Dokes, Brenton O'Brien who round out the top 10. Kurt Stenberg in 11th and Michael Cracknell is in 12th position overall. So traffic now becomes a massive massive factor in this safety car uh, battle but i do believe that there's a lucky dog coming for jacob knight who comfortably can make his way through now and gain the lap back but phil cell versus greg galt is going to be what we're focusing on as the title contenders now have a duel which will last probably six seven laps and it's going to be some of the best six or seven laps we've seen if things uh, go to plan for both of these guys. Phil Sell, there's a lot of pressure on him, but he does have a clear track from him at, in front of him and the ability to control the restart. That's very important. Ethan Griggolt, he'll have to keep an eye on what Phil Sell's doing and make sure that both he and Ian Ford can match him when that time comes. The good news is that this has happened once before in this race. He's had practice on how to attack off of restarts. And this is the, one of the silent things that doesn't get practiced enough when it comes to sim races. How good are you on your safety car restarts? I mean, you have certain races where you can safety car restart, such as uh, some of the endurance racing that you can see, like the IMSA series um, and the official races on the iRacing Sports Network and many more that you can catch with some of our partners uh, and friends of ours. You can find RaceBot TV, Global Sim Racing Channel, Apex Racing, Podium Esports, uh, the likes of which have all got themselves some great, great content, as does LSR TV as well. But this is where you focus with SimSpeed TV. This is where you focus on racing action because all these drivers need to understand how they can make that push forward. Also keep in mind that the top three are being safeguarded by Lee Ellis, of all people, who is one lap down. So everybody now needs to get themselves going forward and making something happen, Reese. This is about now a test of metal, test of mental fortitude, and just how much goodness is your concentration. Exactly, and I think Lee Ellis will be the one that most people have their eyes on on the restart. He's got teammates behind him, he's got drivers who are threatening his teammates behind him. What's he going to do at this restart? Stick with the top five and just let them through on the outside in those high load corners? It's a bit risky. And I believe we're just getting clarification from Michael Korolev here that Lee Ellis is allowed to stay where he is because he's no more than two laps down. So he is one lap down, so he's allowed to keep his position. Jared Filser will be in control. We are going green this time by. So for Madison and Burton, uh, they both know, and we know that Burton likes to press the, the issue a little. He likes to push the envelope with rules. He does know his place here, and he knows that he's got a lot of time that he needs to gain, and that is at least six tenths of an advantage that Ian Ford is going to get when they get to that restart. Now, what will Phil Cell do? What will Grig Gold do in terms of that battle? Ian Ford, don't count him out of this. He may not have the same turn of pace, but if those two come together, Ford will happily go off to the bank and cash his check. But how quickly does Jared Philsell go? He went around here last time, and he's going to go at a very similar point in time. Or is he going to wait a little longer? Goes right on the exit there at the final corner. Greg Gold was pretty even and pretty uh, reactory to it oh. then, as Lee Ellis will now have to dive out of the way for Jake Burton, who makes his way through in fourth position. Gilliam fighting out with El Nabi. El Nabi has to run wide. He loses out then in terms of trying to get that quick jump, and he was unable to do so. But clean at the front, though, as Phil Cell, in control of this one, has seven laps to hold off Ethan Griggolt. 
and he was pushing the limits really hard, actually getting those outside wheels in the grass on the exit of turn one, or the entry rather, that Phil Sell did. So he knows what's at stake here, and that run out of Quebec corner was absolutely fantastic. You see Greg Galt gaining most of it back, almost oh, running Burton. off the Moss. Oh yeah, Burton off. That's going to allow down a bit of a chance, but Burton's got the traction on the outside. He does, and it's very telling. And look at Lee Ellis as well. He's not making life easy for Andrew Gilliam behind, who couldn't capitalize. So, Madison down. do you have enough traction and enough draft to make your way through? Well defended here by Burton. On the brakes into turn number eight, and nothing doing. Madison Down's golden opportunity gets wasted as he looked to try and make that move, and he had absolutely nothing to show for it. Meanwhile, Ethan Craig Gold just runs wide off the exit, maybe pushing a bit too hard as Evolution Racing Team have their own race for the podium at the front. Phil Sell now able to just extend that gap to four tenths of a second as they head through one. Absolutely. It's a pretty even split between these cars right now, and you can already see they've broken away really well from this pack. Madison Downs still harassing the back of Jake Burton here. This is another battle we have to watch, because if they slow up each other enough, Gilliam is right there, and this is the mark that he would want to make. Not just Gilliam, but Fawzan El Nabi is in the mix too, as these top drivers are all trying to gain magical positions to gain points in this championship. And there are also a few team bosses in certain places that are keeping eyes on this as Gilliam pushes too hard and through will go oh. El Nabi, will he? No, they're going to battle it out all the way to turn eight as the corner favours Gilliam on the exit now, but he will be on the outside, which will be the worst place for him to make that happen as he continues to sit and wait and hope that he's got an opportunity to make this move or defend this move against El Nabi. He's lost contact now with Madison down. El Nabi on that inside. Gilliam still fighting it with everything he's got. Gets the inside now for turn number nine, but the outside is there for 10. Oh. And El Nabi sweeping around the outside gets the position. That is how you race through the last few turns at this track. Good show Look from behind. both of those guys. Yeah, behind, they're really starting to back up. Andrew Gilliam still trying to put a bit of Morse code on the back of El Nabi's bumper. Tally Ansich going side by side Whoa. with the Triple Eight. Well held. Kyle Stokes is a lucky, lucky boy as he holds on to the vehicle at turn number one. So now this racing continues at the front gap. Three and a half tenths in Phil Sell's favour. Now, just five laps remain here at Mosport for race number one. And this is huge in terms of the pivotal momentum shift in this championship. As now everybody is just trying to find a something to make a position become theirs. Madison Downs trying. You also got the likes of Andrew Gilliam trying. Kyle Stokes is trying. And look at that train behind Brenton O'Brien as well. Stenberg, Cracknell and Borg all trying to pick up positions as well. This is huge. Everyone knows what's at stake in these last few laps of the race. Have a look at Ethan Griggolt's draft up the front. He was just able to gain a little bit more on Phil Cell. You can see he's much more aggressive on the entry. He wants to try and make that move under brakes, but Phil Cell, he's just holding station and concentrating on his exits. That's where he is really... Oh, Gilliam, my goodness. Round the outside goes Forzan El Nabi. Side by side down the front straight, as you do. Who's going to win this one? one out. Gilliam side by side once again with Forza and El Nabi. Just a reminder, the car behind Lee Ellis is lap traffic. He's not part of this battle, but Gilliam holds on against Forza and El Nabi. What a titanic scrap between those two. Madison down, still behind Jake Burton. Still can't find anything. Nor can Ethan Grid goal. He brought that gap back down to two tenths. Now he's got to start thinking about where he makes his move or how late he makes that move. If he leaves it to the last lap, is he leaving it too late? Does he want to be defending heading on to the final lap of this race? He's got to work out oh. whether he can get by or not, as now we just get a Come little... On. Yeah, Stephen uh -oh. Varga for Mark 1 in the wall. I don't think that's going to be a safety car, though, because... Uh, he still managed to get going again. Here's the battle once again between Jake Burton and Madison Down. Look at the draft between these guys once again. So many aggressive moves could be made in this one moment. But Madison Down, he's got a cool head on his shoulders. He knows what the deal is when he races against Jake Burton. These guys, they race each other a lot. They have a good amount of respect for each other as well. 
Yes, and there's a mistake from Madison that costs him two tenths of a second through the final corner. And that one not working out in favour. Now Brian Borg on the rear of the massive train, which stems behind Talianjic. Kyle Stokes under pressure. He's got Team Boss just behind. So now this is going to be a little bit interesting. Team Boss wants to have him, himself his own little scrap. But at the front, it is still ERT, one, two, and three. Phil Sell and Greg Gold just playing that waiting game when do you bite the bullet there's three laps to go slightly wide there from grid gold that's going to cost a 10 and now phil cell just able to slightly get out of his uh, protective armor and just breathe for the first time in a little bit but not too lightly and not too heavily either yes indeed they're going to have two laps to go when they cross the line next and phil cell once again uh, Ethan Greg Galt, there was an even exit between the two of them. This is going to be defined by what happens on the straight on the last lap. You can see Ian Ford, he's falling out of contention. There's not much he can do from his position, but watch as his teammates fight each other tooth and nail for this victory. They know that there are no team orders. They will fight this one to the end, but they know that the bigger picture is to get constructors and manufacturers and teams done before that they get themselves pretty much sorted in their own battle and their own little war. They know that much because that is what Brenton O'Brien says that they should be racing for and how they should be racing into turn number two once again. And again, Phil so just able to just stretch his legs. He does love those mid-speed corners. I believe that is one of his specialties. And it's at a track where you don't often see too many breaking points as well. He does sometimes have that ability turn it up especially at Monza tracks like that and this has a very similar feel to that so this is where Jared Phil Cell arguably shines big braking zones is his favorite absolutely uh, most sport is Monza with a lot more elevation change and uh, a bit less uh, chicane so uh, high speed still a big feature and he does love his high speed tracks this is going to be Ethan Griggolt's penultimate opportunity to put one up the inside in the penultimate turns Yes, and can he find it? Look at that draft. He's thinking about it. But again, he will now have one more opportunity only to make it happen. Madison oh. down, though. Oh, behind. Big they come incident. together. Bang. Oh. Burton into the fence. And that is game over. They were really oh, tight done. together. And it was a little bit wide from Burton. I'm not sure if they had contact, but heavy into the fence. Burton's race is done with one lap to go here at Mosport, and the battle for the podium is very firmly on oh. at the moment. Gap across the line, two and a half tenths. We just got a replay. It was a sickening thud into the tyres at the quickest part of the racetrack. So now here, what can Ethan Griggolt do against Jared Philsell? Again, Philsell just has a car length, and that is enough at the moment say that Ethan Grid Gold cannot find what he needs to see as they head themselves down the hill at turn four for the last time up the hill at Moss how's your bottle Jared it's good enough at the moment and Ian Ford is there in the mix too do not count him out it's an okay-ish run there from Ethan Grid Gold but now he's got to put everything on the line does he dare put a last ditch dive in the final corner is always an option as well let's not forget that but look at that gap coming down to half a car length between them he's not going to be close enough here into turn number eight he will need to do it at 10 and that is the absolute dead man's grave last position that you can find that move into turn number nine they come along phil cell's got enough of a run and he's just about safe one two three you count it Jared Phil Sell slides out of the final corner and let's get a photo finish. That's race one complete. Nicely done from those guys. And Madison down a strong fourth once again, but there'll be a, a couple of eyes on that incident between himself and Jake Burton as uh, more cars crossing the start finish line. Now Ethan Warren with a severely damaged Altus car. Let's get another modem simulation replay. Wow, wow, we wow. This one is going to be talked for a little while longer. So let's go on board then with Madison down, see it from his perspective. So he's really trying to rack the pace up here. He's trying to find himself an opportunity to go through. And this is going to be key to see what happens with Burton's line. So he's pulling in that gap. He's got that gap in under half a car length at the moment. Now pulls to the inside, feigns to the inside. Schumacher moves to the outside. And, oh, it just looks to me that they've just both 
uh, get together ever so slightly. Maybe even Jake Burton washing out, trying to cover off that move, but not having enough move together. It'll be interesting to see this one from Burton's perspective on the rear as well, just to see whether that is Burton washing out because that is very, very difficult to tell. And I think Burton just had a yeah. tap on entry, which pushed him out a little wide. And then the second contact, there was a send. Yeah, it was it was a bit of understeer there from Jake Burton. And unfortunately, Madison was uh, just creeping up on him. But the unofficial results are up on screen, Jake. They are. Jared Philsell picks up the win by two tenths of a second over Eaton Grid Golf formation finish for ERT with Ian Ford getting third position in his Holden. Madison Down gets fourth in controversial fashion with Andrew Gilliam finishing that one off in fifth position. Falls on Onabi sixth with Tali Ancic, a stunning seventh place for him, up 22 places with Kyle Stokes, triple eight, getting eight. Brenton O'Brien, team boss of Evolution Racing Team, brings the 26 home in ninth position, and Kurt Stenberg rounds out the top 10. A fantastic run from him, starting pretty much dead last. Michael Cracknell in 11th. More, well, he was actually dead last. Fantastic run from him to get 11th. Borg and Burton completing the top 13 there with Dylan Shepard, Chris Coxhead, and Ethan Warren rounding out the top 16. Emily Jones gains 10 positions, finishing in 17th with Thomas Hins in 18th position. Both of them team up together in AOSC when they do endurance racing. Sean Kelly gets 19th with Thomas McMillan rounding out the top 20. Riley Blythe and Andrew Fraser are the last of the drivers on the lead lap with Stephen Varga having an instant late with Lee Ellis there in 24th. Ross Rizzo classified three laps down. Brenton Hobson four laps down. We're starting to get into retirement territory here. Brady Myers and Marlon McMullen classified uh, where they are. And Jordan Ross, Riley Preston, David Sanford and Jacob Knight rounding out that top 32. Corey Preston having himself involved in the lap one shunt with Wayne Burke, Michael Barron, Jackson, Susland Harlow, JSH. So you've got Sam Blacklock there, Brett Loxton, Robinson after a great qualifying, Cooper Webster as well, getting caught up in that major, major incident. Big, big issues there in that opening round of racing here, but there is one more chance of redemption. There is a second race that's going to happen. It's going to happen after these messages. You are watching V8 Scops 2019 here with SimSpeed TV on the iRacing Esports Network.
Growing up as a kid in Oklahoma, where I'm from, the Chili Bowl is the biggest race that we have. The Chili Bowl has kind of been my favorite race of the year. Growing up a dirt racer in Oklahoma, that's kind of the holy grail.
fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he got rid of both of them. Maloney! Oh, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up the wall. Oh, my God! Oh, my goodness. Oh, the field's going to get rolled. Six very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. This is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my oh god! My god, what? This is the original esport racing game. This is iRacing. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to V8 Scopt Racing Action, race number two. And the final race of the night is going to be a little longer than many people uh, have been. Of It's going to be 39 laps worth of racing to end out proceedings this evening. And everybody is now on the edge of this, trying to find themselves the chance to see whether this race is going to go the same, differently, or maybe throw a massive twist in the tail. It's Jake Sperry and Reese Gardner here in the commentary booth. Jay Kennedy up on cameras for us. Reese, race one had the big one, and there is no other way of describing what that was except it was the big one. Now Absolutely. these drivers have to recalibrate for their next situation, their next race, and just remember, it's a completely different race. Absolutely. The uh, the grid has been set by every driver's second fastest qualifying time in the session we had before race one. We are racing in the evening now. It's just getting five minutes past seven in the evening in sim time. So the track is a lot cooler than it was. 25 degree track temperature and uh, there's less sun hitting the track. Plus, they do have a fuel tank restriction and a pit stop. They won't be able to make it past about 27 laps before they got a splash. Very, very true with that. So everyone is going to be just looking to get themselves in with some great racing and try and make sure that they make sure their stops all work in conjunction. But it is also worth reminding that there was a lot of scrutiny over that incident right on the penultimate lap between Madison Down and Jake Burton. That one has been ruled a racing instant. No uh, penalties will be applied for that one, which I have to say is the correct decision in my view on that little incident. But these drivers know those who didn't make it through race one, they've got to do it all over again. And they've got to change their mindset up because what you'll typically find is if one race didn't go well, you're likely to be more aggressive to try and make up for the fact that the first race didn't go well. Absolutely, and these cooler conditions are going to result in cars that like to turn a little bit more, which is going to be good in the initial stages of the race, but I tell you what, this track, it, it looks wider than it actually is in a lot of places. It's very easy to be tapped off, go into the grass, into the wall, ricocheting off other cars, as we did see in race one. I just hope to whatever deity may be out there that the field makes it through lap one clean. Yes, everyone is definitely trying to get through the opening lap cleanly. We've had two attempts and we've had two failures, so hopefully we will get to see that one work out. What we can do for you, though, is run through the grid that we have uh, given to us at the moment. So this is how everyone will be lining up. I'm not sure we're going to be able to get this one uh, put in exactly uh, the way we want to on screen, so do bear with us. Uh, in terms of this one, but it will be Jared Filsell once again on the pole position. Ethan Gray got second, Ian Ford uh, in third, roll tie. Uh, but then it's Forza El Navi who will get fourth, Jackson Susan Harlow in fifth, then it will be Jordan Ross, Jake Burton, Madison Down starting from eighth, Cooper Webster, and Sam Blacklock rounding out the top 10. So, really, a top 10 here, Reese, that we're looking at is very different, has some change in it, and those drivers are a little bit 
further forward than they were last time is going to be a massive, massive game changer for those who are looking to try and make that push and show exactly what they're all about. That's it. And like I said, it's a cooler track, so you can afford to be a little bit more aggressive with the car. It'll treat you a bit more nicely. These cars, they weigh one and a half tons. They're very heavy for race cars and uh, on purpose undertired and overpowered. So any chance you can get to get a bit of extra grip, you're going to use it as much as you can. You just got to be wary of the other cars around you. And through these first couple turns at most sport, it's a lot harder than it looks to start a race. It absolutely is. That turn one as well is very, very quick and it is a lightning quick start, which sometimes can be the cause of instance. It reminds you of a Silverstone in some respects, the new layout that, of course, is brand new to the iRacing service and the fact that it is a quick right into a very quick left. So you have to be very, very cautious about the way you attack that opening section of the lap. We've seen instance already, and of course, we have seen track blockages. So these drivers need to know they can't win this race on lap one of 39 but my goodness we've seen already how many drivers lose it exactly and as the session uh, this practice warm-up session enters its final minute they'll be determining what the track is like how it's evolved how it's been set up in this uh, new server that the administrators of the league have put up for this second race 50 seconds to go and uh, phil cell is looking good as per usual a 17-2 at the top of the time sheets We'd like to thank you all for tuning in here on the IRAC Esports Network to see the racing action that we've got going on here. And we also like to thank everyone who is supporting every single driver who is streaming out there on Twitch TV. So make sure that you give all of those drivers a nice little bit of love as well for that. But 20 seconds before practice ends and our gridding process begins. And of course, this gridding process is going to be a little bit shorter, we do believe, it would be otherwise so let's very quickly run down through how this grid is going to stand we have already gone through the top 10 on this one of course it is jared philsell who is in control of this field with ethan griggolt in second ian ford starts third with forza el nabi fourth it's fifth for jackson susan harlow and sixth for ross rizzo seventh will be jake burton with madison down in eighth and cooper webster and sam blacklock round out the top 10 in 11th, Andrew Gilliam is going to be starting alongside One Performance Racing's Wayne Burke. Brady Myers in lucky 13th with Chris Robinson behind him. Ethan Warren is going to start in 15th position with Sean Kelly in 16th. Brett Loxton, Marlon McMullen, Kyle Stokes and Hobbo88, Brenton Hobson rounding out the top 20. Go Lee in 21st, Corey Preston from 22nd, then it's Thomas Hintz and Michael Taliancic. Chris Coxhead and Emily Jones on row 13. Row 14, we'll see Michael Barron and Jacob Knight with to uh, Thomas McMillan and Ross Rizzo on row 15. Rest of the grid will cycle on your screen right now. We get prepared for racing once again here at Mo Sport. It was a very heavy incident. Start the race last time. We're not looking for a repeat of that, but Phil Sell is looking to go back to back with victories here to try and make sure that this one is his evening one minute on the clock lights on on top of the i racing gantry we're getting ready for racing action here at most sport once again and let's get ourselves underway and again jackson susan harlow is very slow off the start and that's going to allow uh, jordan ross the opportunity to go to the outside jay burton nowhere to go phil has got the whole shot once again through turn number one and the front four absolutely no issues at all look a little bit further back no issues at all through the first 10 15 vehicles as they head themselves through one vehicle struggling though through clayton's corner that's cooper webster who will drop two positions from that one behind the old c sports car gonna go straight back up the inside looking for it gets a slide on as they now look to go through little tap from gilliam on the back there that's the one performance car of wayne burke who starts dropping back as they head themselves up to moss corner for the first time third time's the charm that's a great oh, start it is everyone on oh, oh, as, as i speak word, my word he as runs i speak he took great gold but just like that reaches your fault but oh. ian Ford gets the tap from four down el Nabi, heading themselves through four el Nabi went down the inside bang goes the contact luckily they all kept it out of the tires ian Ford just with a glancing blow but my goodness me phil cell has had all his christmases come up at once 
I'm so sorry, everyone. I'll take the bullet for that one. We'll get a Motum simulation replay of that incident down at Moss Corner, the slowest corner on the circuit. Let's see what happened. Focusing on Ethan Galt, but Wayne Burke's incident is what we will look at first coming uh, through into Quebec Corner. So he's on the outside on Andrew Gilliam, but Gilliam washing out and making a bit of contact with the ERT car ahead. And in the midst of all of that, they sorted themselves out, but let's have a look at what happened between the ERT machines. Oh, Ian Ford was helped. He got massively helped. It was a massive, massive incident. And Ian Ford struggling with damage because he's now dropped to position to Andrew Gilliam. And oh. there goes Ethan Greg Galt through as well. As well as Ethan Greg Galt going through, trying his Brady Myers. And what can Brady's bunch find on the brake as he gets in and tries to make that move possible? Oh, he just hangs him out to try. And that's going to allow another vehicle through. That's an Alton car. That's Ethan Warren trying to find a way through. So Ford is getting great trade. Oh, bit of contact there as they get themselves onto the straight. So no love lost as they push forward. But Bill still leads. Oh, look at second. And what a pack behind. That's incredible. Cars all over the circuit coming down this straightaway. Hinsey leading them up with Ross Rizzo, Michael Barron and Jacob Knight. And then the likes of uh, Michael Taliansic bringing up the rear. They don't have long to sort themselves out here. Borg and Coxhead going side by side to the third last turn. And Coxhead showing that if you get on the throttle, you can get that position done. But uh, Brian Borg not uh, having 100% of it. Sanford going wide on the last turn. Yeah, Sanford is starting to just push a little bit wide, but your top 10 now are like this. Phil Sir leads, it's JSH, Jackson Susan Harlow in second position, Burton in third, then Jordan Ross in fourth, it's Alnabi fifth, down sixth, Blacklock seventh, then Webster, Gilliam and Grig Gold round out the top 10 at the moment. Let's focus on Madison down, he's got four Zan Alnabi just in front, looking to try and make that move up at Moss. On the brakes, can't quite find it. Jackson Susan Harlow, of course, under pressure as well. He's now the leading light at the moment in this field for TTL Esports, but already two seconds to Jared Philsell. This may just be a best of the race, uh, best of the rest race. Yeah, it's uh, uh, something that we've seen all too often in V8 Scops over the last couple of seasons. Jared Philsell running away with it, but this time it was through no extra effort from him. It actually took a couple other cars coming together, but it, once he's got this lead, he's going to do everything he can to hold it. We're riding on board with Wayne Burke as he chases down Ian Ford. For and there we go. That was expected. Drive-through penalty. Forza on Nabi. Goodness me. Wayne Burke trying to go for the move on Ian Ford. One of the most embattled drivers in this field. And there's El Nabi serving the penalty. Yep. And that will drop him a ways back through the field. But now look at Wayne Burke trying to push, trying to find an opportunity to make that move happen. And there's Brett Loxton and Chris Robinson who are waiting for an opportunity to make sure that one works out in their favour on the brace into the right hander of Quebec corner. Nothing doing for them at the moment as these packs start to splinter into little groups of two at the moment except this one. And look at Loxton struggling coming off of turn number three as he gets a load of curb and holds it but still no move as they get up into what we're going to get a modem simulation replay here on board with brett loxton let's see exactly what happened to the zuva racing driver coming into i believe that's quebec but just in front of him so what went on here just catching the grass well held did not lift, and that is a sign of a driver who will not give up. Here comes Ethan Greg Galt, though. Danny inside oh, contact no! in front of them. Bang! Blacklock into the tyres. He was second here last year. He will not get that this year. Contact with Cooper Webster, who took the inside line. Blacklock tried to shut the door and ran out of road as Greg Galt gets two positions, as Blacklock is effectively day and dunzo. Yeah, well, this is the replay of what happened. A big lunge and Blacklock had already turned in by that point. I don't think that car's going to be covering many more miles than this one. No, I don't think so either. As now down the inside comes Wayne Burke on Ian Ford. And will he finally get the position done on the walking wounded? Yes, he will. So position made. And now how quickly can wow. Brett Loxton find himself a way through? And as we just get another little look on how just 
deadly. It's been wires and round goes Ian Ford. One, two, three positions almost going away. McMullen tries to get opportunistic as well. Robinson doesn't get much of a run off the exit. Now looking backwards, here's come Tomo 88 trying to push the Synergy car to go through as well. There's the redress coming in from Loxton. Try and get back behind Ian Ford. But like that, it is now rush hour as they head themselves to eight. Yeah, and off the brakes a bit early is Hobson just lifting off and Lee Ellis fighting his car on the inside there. A bit boxed in is Go Lee at the moment and real jostling behind as Kyle Stokes finds himself a little bit of his own racetrack. Brett Loxton behind him doing everything he can to keep Sean Kelly behind. Meanwhile, second and third close again. Burton really starting to put the pressure on Jackson, Suslin Harlow. Jordan Ross joining the party as well very much joining the party as Andrew Gilliam has lost position to Ethan Grigolt who's now back up into seventh position right now so Susan Harlow having to play defensive gunner Burton Ross and Madison down all need to get out there and get aggressive if they want to go and make some positions it's lap six of 39 they still have that pit stop remember questions are who makes the very early call come down in onto the lane as well Ethan Warren under pressure too Brady Myers all over the rear trying to find a move and still can't find anything Gap seems a little bit too far back to see any moves just now but Ethan Warren is the one under pressure here as this TTL esports car tries to make that move yeah, and it's not much of a draft there from Myers, but he is having a little look up the inside. Incident back in the field. Meanwhile, that's Riley Blythe. It is Riley Blythe, and that one is coming out of Moss Corner. So we'll get a replay of this brought to you by Motum Simulation. As now, here we go. It's looking down the hill they go at four, up the hill at five. And oh, there's an incident in front of that. That is one of the uh, Trans Tasman cars, I do that Emily Jones and Brian Borg coming together. And Riley Blythe, who is completely out of position, just gets a little helping hand uh, from David Sanford. Let's go on board with his perspective and look at this one. It's a heavy over the curb. Uh, you can see Blythe already losing it through the first part. As uh, Oh, just Sanford just there being uh. a little bit lazy there, really, just using the vehicle in front of the brake, and there's no reason. Yeah, Blythe was an innocent victim in all of that. He didn't do anything wrong. Emily Jones as well. Um getting a few taps from Brian Borg and have a look at the exit she's getting here from Quebec. I don't know if that's a redress or not, but uh, Borg, it seems uh, he's almost defending it. There we go. That is a replay of what caused that concertina effect. And both of those cars with a bit more dense in their metal than previously. Yep, as Brady Myers still has his battle with Ethan Warren. As we just get an eye on this around the outside, he tries and can he just about hold it? Oh, you bet he can, but he washes out right late. And that outside line is now going to favor the Altus car, who will take the position. But now Brady will try and get up the inside. Bang! Oh. One touch, two touch, and through will go Wayne Burke, I believe that is, to pick up two positions, will he? Round the outside, he'll try and try and get that move as he tries to make that one happen. Has he got enough on the tank as they head themselves into Clayton's corner? Well, they're going to be too wide here. This is going to be dangerous. But I think Brady, just unable to hold it, beautifully worked from Wayne Burke. It's a replay on screen of what's happened to Kyle Stokes. Yeah, and that's a mirror image of what happened between Burton and Down in race one. Just uh, washing out in the middle of the corner, and there was another car there. So Stokes, not much he could have done about that, I think. Nothing at all. But at the front, there is still that battle. Oh, big wiggle. Jordan Ross has a moment. And now Madison Down can pounce on the outside won't have the draft that's been well covered by ERT's Jordan Ross but what can Trans Tasman do to pull this gap back in he will have no help on the outside I think he's going to yield out of it Burton won't be able to make the move Madison down definitely will be leaving a lot more room there after the incident he had with Burton last race he gives up the chance to make the move yeah, fair enough too as uh, oh hang on a minute he's trying to go for it at the final turn Ross sees him coming and leaves him the room Nicely done from both of them. Down's going to get the position here, or is he? Or Ross is trying he? to hold the outside. Nah, nah, he, he hasn't got it. Down has it. Yeah, that's a very good move and a very good position there as Jordan Ross has made wonders in the way that he makes that one happen. So Madison Down gets himself the position and moves up into fourth place 
in this one. The middle of the pack, though, is really heating up at the moment. Get a focus on Brenton Hobson, Hobbo 88 right now, because he's looking at Chris Robinson. Robinson looking at McMullen. Myers running wide compared to Ethan Warren. So they are all in their scrap, all fighting out final few spots inside the top 10 in and around 12th position as well so they are all having themselves this wonderful wonderful battle that's going on at the moment as behind that you've got likes of Ford, Ellis, Loxton all trying to hold on and down the inside of Sean Kelly goes Corey Preston he's got one yeah what we're focusing at the moment on Jake Burton he has got a uh, draft on Suzlin Harlow but he's just holding back Lap after lap after lap, he is observing what's going on here. Maybe saving a bit of fuel and waiting for that pit stop cycle to make his move. Well, that's very, very capable of being the case. So, what can happen in this one if they continue to fight like this and try and attack like this? That's the question that needs to be asked. All the while, Jared Philsell's lead has increased to three and a half seconds at the front of this field. He is romping away after one quarter's distance of this one and he could be over 10 seconds clear by the end of this event if he is not uh, or if he is very careful about the way that he starts to drive this one another little battle going on brett loxton trying to get past go lee lee ellis here as they head through quebec corner and brett loxton well you are in canada son so there is a famous brett who will want to try and uh, uh, rub off a bit of excellency of execution in terms of some overtakes but on the brakes not quite there just yet at moss and you can see the environment getting darker as the sun gets lower that's going to be playing with the driver's perception especially if they're racing with vr goggles you've got to be mindful of that burton versus suzlin harlow further foot towards the front once again though they stay line astern this is one of the most measured drives i've seen jake burton do well this has been his maturity as in comes madison dow oh early call bold call thinks he can go 28 laps on a tank of fuel he's gone as early as possible to make that work so if you can't get it done already got to try it a different way he will have old tires to finish this race off so this is going to be a case of madison trying to jump jared in the stop of all people get ahead and then block for his life Yep, and that's uh, a strategy that we've seen has worked in this series in the past. So as Down gets back off the jacks and exits the pits, that was a uh, total transit time of 31.6 seconds and a 13.7 second uh, or 30.4 second stop according to what's on the screen. So that's the first indication of the kind of times we're seeing. And Brett Loxton has been given a drive through. That was for his incident with Kyle Stoke. So no shocks there brett loxton well he will now have to dive down onto the lane in front of that though side by side hobbo 88 trying to push with go lee lee ellis and lee's got the draft though of ian ford and that's crucial in terms of this little scrap so lee ellis able to hold the run through the first part of this straight and into the latter part unable to make the move is hobbo 88 brenton hobson so he will have to try and find another way to make this one work. It may have to be on strategy call that he gets it done. Yeah, well, he was ahead of both of these guys last time they crossed the line. So he had an issue. Wayne Burke, the next man to jump into the pits for one performance racing. And Brett Loxton serving his drive through penalty. Yeah, very uh, much a run off the mill there. Wayne Burke trying to get his own little jump in terms of the way this goes. Now, Jordan Ross is going to be a man under pressure soon. Ethan Grigg Galt, that last time by, took three tenths out of him, and that gap comes down to under a second. So, Jordan Ross may just have to yield and let the championship leader go, who may not be championship leader for much longer coming out of this event. Burton, though, still trying to find a way past JSH, but still nothing there as we got ethan warren right now here he's under pressure right now brady's gonna come back at him here in the battle for seventh position yeah well there's a slightly wider uh entry in the second part of moss for ethan warren he was able to translate that into better traction but you can see that draft and he's almost going for the move here is brady but just backing out at the last second once again it doesn't make sense to be so aggressive this early in the race that's why they're holding back 
They are holding back, but look behind as diving down onto the lane will be Marlon McMullen looking to get the undercut to work here. And now look at that, another little look for the move for Brady Myers. But again, nothing looking there for Ethan Warren, who very much had it scouted through turn number one. And then through two, three and four, again, this may just be another case of scouted moves again and again and again, which you cannot really argue with in terms of the way that they are driving at the moment. Corey Preston now looking to try and get on the aggressive back to two. He's caught the rear of Brenton Hobson and Preston having a very solid drive. He's up 10 position. Absolutely, and that's what you want to see for a guy like uh, Corey Preston. He's, uh, he works hard, he drives the car a lot, so it's good to see. But we are still looking at the Myers-Warren battle here. You can tell Myers is just trying to psych Warren out here. He's making, he's making those half moves, trying to throw him off. Trying to get in the mirrors, make the vehicle as wide as possible, just to be as as annoying as possible really try and break that concentration spell off of Ethan Warren but again nothing happening then as they head through turn number eight and back again into nine and looking at turn number ten that's a dive down onto pit road from Brady Myers and he will decide I've had enough of sitting behind an Altus livery I'm going to dive down in make my stop and get back out and going again and I don't blame him in that situation Ethan Warren was slightly holding him up yeah, clear air is sometimes the name of the game around here, especially considering these fast corners and uh, messing with the aerodynamic sensitivity of the car. Jake Burton, though, seems very comfortable behind JSH at the moment. Does, but behind that, Ethan Grigolt has caught Jordan Ross. So this is the battle fourth position. Keep an eye on this because Ethan Grigolt's trying everything. Little bump from Burton as well as Forza on Army gets a second drive through penalty this time with Brian Borg and it really hasn't been uh, a Forzan El Nabi day it's been more Warzan than Forzan it has to be said but Ethan Griggolt within a couple of tenths of a second here maybe looking to try and just pick off that position and there's the lift from Jordan Ross thank you I'll take four and fair enough to uh you know, these guys recognize the situation. Ethan is trying to recover, and he's shown that uh, that he has good pace. So Ross is just looking to run his own race here and let Greg Galt continue on with his business. Very much so. He has no reason to fight, and so he will not fight. Lap 15 now of 39. Jared Filsell's lead is up to five seconds over JSH. Jackson Suterland Harlow jake burton in third position overall in this one look a little bit further back down the field though ross rizzo leading a three-car train here which includes himself thomas hint and michael Barron in the mark one car and so these three looking to try and just pick up some good results here, some solid finishes we know that ross rizzo is the king of the solid finish just outside of the top 10 but michael Barron, thomas hint they both want to encroach on that title they absolutely do, and this is one of Hinsey's best chances at the moment as the track continues getting cooler and the tyres start to breathe a little bit more nicely. That's where these guys are going to start coming alive, and Hinsey's turn of form recently has been fantastic, as has Mr. Rizzo. These guys both doing very well. Oh, what's happened? Corey Preston is pushing for a gap that doesn't exist. Oh, oh he's really trying to push for a gap that doesn't exist. Trying to angle away down to the inside. Hobbo's got to give him room. He washes out and he says, I'm not going to fight that. If you want that position that hard, you'll take it. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. And they're both coming into the pits. That was, that was completely pointless. Oh, well, oh. it happened. Goodness me. And I almost contact between them on the pit road, so... That was very much uh, a syndication. Oh well, that's goodness. how I feel about that. And it's rare that you see Hobbo88 show emotion like that. He's one of the nicest characters on the grid. But I think even he has felt like frustration has got to him after all of that. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's uh, all she wrote in terms of that incident. But uh, these two still have not left each other alone. Burton's just sitting on the back bumper of Jackson Suslin Harlow here. I get the feeling he'll try and follow him into the pits. He might follow him as uh, 
before he pressed, lost a lot of time uh, in that stop on the pit. So he does drop behind in the end. But here's Jake Burton, though, heading through turn eight, looking for turn number nine and ten, and maybe just thinking about when's the right time to make that decision to dive down onto the lane. It's not this time by. He feels like the pace is still good enough from young JSH as they now start pushing. But they do have to be a little wary of the vehicle behind. Ethan Grigg. Galt is only a second and a half back. Yeah, and he's uh, looking quite aggressive too. His uh, last lap was a 17-9. Burton and Susan Harlow both in the 18-3s. So the Eggman is on quite a charge. He's getting hard-boiled. I'm sorry. And someone who's on a charge who's struggling is Mattis Down. He's found one of the Evolution Racing Team uh, alternate strategy gunmen at the moment because he is strategy is being shot down by Riley Preston in the 055. They make their way through turn number two. Madison's on much fresher tyres than McMillan and Sanford and all of them looking to the inside. Still nothing, no gap. And Madison, I can see, is visibly getting frustrated with this. Yeah, when you're boxed in the middle of a pack like that, it's easy to get frustrated because your car's overheating. Oh, he's oh, oh my careful, God. careful. Oh, goodness me, Riley Preston having to overshoot the middle of the corner there. Can Down take advantage of this? He's going to give it a go. go. But Preston, he's got that much better exit. Ultimately, that did nothing. Well, Madison is trying to find every trick in the book to find a way through, and it's rare you see him go for that. In comes Jake Burton, then he pits then from the oh. third position out on the road. And uh -oh. now they're three wide, heading themselves in oh. through. Keep an eye on this one. Riley, oh my word. And that is Madison around the outside, making it work. And finally, getting the position that he wants, jumping in off the back of this train. It's Sanford, oh, that's a mistake. Whoa. Sanford just about will get an unsafe pit entry for that one as he looks to dive down in. Out comes Jake Burton. And crucially enough, though, Burton is going to be ahead. Is he of Madison down? They're going to be too wide almost as they head to Clayton's. Burton retains. Yeah, he does too. And Madison down. He's got those tyres up to temperature and he's been working them for a few laps. Burton, he still has to uh, figure out the temperatures, get the car up to its operating range. But he's doing it nice and quickly. Madison down, trying to look for a move, possibly at Moss Corner. You can see how close they are here. If Down wants to try and get by him, he has to do it pretty soon. Otherwise, he's going to sit back there and fuel save a bit more. Very, very true. And that is what we are seeing. Drivers are looking to try and make things happen. But at the moment, it's Ethan Grigolt who's making things happen. Jackson Susan Harlow covers the move then from Jake Burton to come down in. And I'm not surprised with that. Phil still stays out, as does Grig Galt. Jordan Ross there in now in third position. Andrew Gilliam moves up to fourth with Ethan Warren moving into fifth. Into the box then goes JSH. He'll be looking for tyres. He'll be looking for fuel. And he'll be looking to get back out and going again ahead of Jake Burton and Madison Down who head through the final corner and look to go on their merry ways. Over the stripe they go. Jackson Susan Harlow slow stop though. And there goes two positions. There goes two more positions. And that's not going to be helpful. He'll be just ahead of Brent and O'Brien, but he's behind the very tricky character of Riley Preston. He certainly is. And Suslan Harlow will not be entirely happy with how that stop went, but he's going to try and go for that longer run towards the end of the race. Maybe he's got a couple tricks up his sleeve that we don't know about. Maybe he does. Maybe he's going for a very quick blitz to the finish, but it seems to me that his stop was a little bit longer than advised. Race leader Jared Philsell continues on his charge. His lead over Ethan Grigolt the last time they crossed the line was 7.2 seconds. Doesn't matter now because the Eggman is down on pit road and he will be followed by Jordan Ross to dive in and make that stop as also Ethan Warren comes in with Ian Ford in tow. Yeah, and Andrew Gilliam assumes second on the road at the moment. He's having another great run, that Pursuit Sim Racing driver. Ross Rizzo staying out. And he's made his way up into a good position so far. Let's have a look at Burton and Down. Burton's actually managed to gap down slightly since they came out of the pits. And uh, Tally Ansich in front of him. Uh, that might prove a little troublesome. We'll have to see. And the stop there for Ethan Rigolt, not good enough. He's still behind Madison Down. 
and Jake Burton on track. Side by side though, Thomas Millen, and he's gonna try and get this one around the outside of Clayton's corner. That's a bold place to make it happen. He'll try and up and under it here as he tries to battle with young McMillan. And at the moment, looking to the inside of turn three, not near enough. Mistake though, unforced error. And bang, they touch on the exit now as they push towards turn number four. All of this is McMillan just starting to struggle a bit with pressure. He was uh, complaining about how he wasn't liking this track in pre-qualification on the brakes, up the hill. Nice tight line from JSH. That is how you make a move. Yeah, and McMillan had no response on the exit because Suzlan Harlow just slotted right in front. Our race leader is in the pits. What can Jared Philsell do from here? What can he do? He hits his box and he hits it perfectly. Andrew Gilliam will follow in. So effectively, almost everyone is in and making that stop. Ethan Warren as well, though in his own little race. Let's not forget that. So Ross Rizzo will res uh, assume race lead at the moment as Phil Sell comfortably gets out and away. Where will Gilliam come out in all of this? There goes Burton. There goes down. There goes Greg Galt. But I think Gilliam is going to slot into fifth position right now. As coming out of the final corner is Riley Preston. That is officially a position gain, a big position gain for a certain Andrew Gilliam, but Preston has found a way through and gone too deep. So Gilliam might just get this one back here on the battle to Quebec. Let's see what they do in Quebec. This is a multiple lines corner. Gilliam just taking it a little less aggressively on the exit, trying the over under. It's working for him a little bit so far. What can Suzlan Harlow do in the middle of all this? This isn't what he wants. They just tap the brakes over the rise and the run down to Moss Corner. It looks like Gilliam's got it. Also getting word that Thomas Hins has a pit lane penalty that he needs to serve as there's a little contact on the exit, but Riley Preston has to lose out with the older tyres. He'll get a little bit of help with the way that the corner uh, angles to the left-hand side, but on this Mario Andretti straight, the next few sections always favour the car on the inside for turn eight. So Preston, not much he can do. Trying to look to the inside, it's defended as well by J JSH. And that is not going to be enough, though, for Riley Preston. Side by side, they were hoping for and not quite getting, as it is very much on now in the battle for second, oh, third, fourth. Ethan. Ethan Warren. Around the outside of turn eight, he got it done. Oh, look Amazing. at that lunch from Ian Ford. Oh, yeah, goodness me. He's managed to get that done on the TTR car as well. He got Lee. He went Lee. He went Lee. Lee is gone. Wow, so good move from Ian Ford on his recovery. There's Corey Preston and Sean Kelly as well in that mix. Robinson, Burke, Warren, all in there as Marlon McMullen has pulled away. Ethan Grigolt is there now with Madison down. And Madison's got to be a little careful about just how quickly Ethan Grigolt can fight this one. They head through the right-hander of Moss, and now they're making their way down the hill they go towards turn number eight. And for Ethan Grigolt, he knows that he can only gain really two positions out of this. Down and Burton to get second and to damage limitation his way against Jared Philsell. Is he looking on the brakes into this next right-hander? Not able to make that happen. 30-second stop and hold goes to Thomas Hins for ignoring the race stewards. But for the moment anyway, Ethan Greg Galt just doing enough. But look at the hold-up job coming along from a Madison down and he's really tight Whoa. on him on the exit there trying to hold him up as much as possible and I think the old tires are going to have to give up here Madison trying the outside line at one will have the inside for two very tight on the curve they go can Madison hold it on the inside line for the moment he's trying everything but they're going to stay too wide for three are they you bet they are going to stay too wide for three Ethan Griggolt back down to the inside half a lap side by side this is fantastic, and Greg Galt has gotten the better exit there. Down has no response to that. He's going to have to slot in behind. Would he be able to almost get it done at Moss? He's trying his hardest to hurl that car through he's got the it. big left-hander. Yeah, he's going to try and get him at the uh, exit of Moss, but no Greg exit. Galt with the wider line, better traction once again. No exit there for Madison Down, and that cost him in that battle. Unable to answer the call and make anything happen from just that point. Massive train behind Wayne Burke, though, at the moment. It contains Robinson, Ford, Hobson, Ellis, Preston, Kelly, and behind all of that is Cooper Webster. That is a seven-car train, and Ian Ford is slicing and dicing his way through all of it at the moment.
He absolutely is, and Ian Ford is one of the best racers in this field. I don't think there's going to be much of an argument to that, and that is, I believe, Wayne Burke making his way through there on Mr. Robinson. This is the battle for 14th back. Look at how many cars involved, and Ford going for another lunge. He just can't quite get it done this time, but you can tell Ian Ford is uh, a lot less calm than we usually see him. He's on a mission. He is a man on a mission, so now what can Ian Ford do? Hobo 88 trying to get back on the aggressive factor, and he's not quite finding it at the moment. Still worth noting, Ross Rizzo leads this race, but he is due to make that stop. Phil Sell's lead over Jake Burton is cut to just four seconds at the moment, but not enough really to close that gap down at this stage. So still, they scrap, they battle in this middle of the pack, Wayne Burke under pressure, Chris Robinson, the man who's got to be a little bit cautious here with a hard charge at Ian Ford who gets on the brakes and can't quite find a way through, but this may be the best chance of the lot. Yeah, perhaps. There's a big draft down this Mario Andretti straight away. And Corey Preston behind these guys is trying desperately to find his way past Lee Ellis. But we continue to, uh, well, we actually take a look from Corey Preston's dash briefly. And Ford, oh, as they go defensive side by side in front of him. What can he do here? Robinson goes slightly wide. They're all scrapping against each other. He's got the inside for 10. He's oh. got the inside for White's corner. And oh, look at the exit. Get it. That's a beautiful exit there from Wayne Burke. And now Hobbo again going to try the outside at one. He's got great runs off that final corner. Again, he finds nothing. And they are all just tripping over each other right now. And the train will only get longer with Cooper Webster waiting in the wings. Yeah, Ian Ford will be getting mighty frustrated with this. All he wants to do is be at the front of this pack. But there's so much jostling going on. Meanwhile... We take a look briefly behind them, but they are all in a line here. Seven cars. Cooper Webster trying to make up as much ground as he can, actually running three tenths faster than the cars at the rear of this pack. Very much running quicker than these drivers in the pack because they are all just running over each other at the moment. Wayne Burke at the moment just playing defensive trigger at the moment. Can he hold off a train of eight? which it will be come the end. And again, Robinson uh -oh. now moves to the outside, looking to try and make this one happen. Ross Rizzo dives into the pits. He could come out right in this pack if he's not too careful. So now look at this. Round the outside, inside line now for Chris Robinson. And they're going to hold it together. Bit of contact there as they head through inside line again. More oh, contact. Bang! There we go. Ian Ford now gets the opportunity. He dives to the inside. Oh, and it's oh. a wiggle from Lee Ellis. Bang! Into the fence he goes. Oh, yeah. And that was in reaction to what happened uh, with Chris Robinson. He just tried his best to avoid it. And, and in all the jostling, there was nothing he could do. He lost control of that car. Modem simulation replay of what happened. Check this out from Lee Ellis' perspective. He sees Gilliam, panics, and then he gets into a tank slap. I can't control it. Round he goes. No, Lee. No, Lee. That's not what you wanted to do. But this is still very much anyone's race in the middle of the pack because Ross Rizzo has come out right on the rear of Cooper Webster. So all of that will go on. Now, surely, Ian Ford will try and break away, try and find Ethan Warren once again as they get all up on the brakes, heading through Moss, and they are all nice and dandy. So Jared Philsell now regains the lead here in this one, but the middle of the pack is now a race between... Oh, sorry, the next in line is a race between Griggolt and also Jake Burton. Griggolt took four tenths out of Burton on that last lap, and wow. this lap, a 17.8, compare that to the 79, another tenth gets locked off. The gap is 1.1. And crucially, Ethan Griggolt is running. Hey, he, wow, look at Phil Cell and Griggolt's last lap times. They are three thousandths of a second apart. Phil Cell, a 17.806, Griggolt, a 17.809. They want that one too. Still battling in that middle pack, and they've got Corey Preston looking to try and make some moves in the JMSR car and he's trying to look at turn two he's not going to get there but still it's Wayne Burke who remember pitted very early has very old tires he's trying to hold everyone up concertina happens as that uh, was Sean Kelly getting a little sideways through Quebec that allows Webster and Rizzo onto the back of the train all of a sudden they could be thinking about Denver Barrett night this is an amazing train of battling as webster thought about the inside on sean kelly who says no back in line sir 
Yeah, and uh, well back in line does Webster fall. A little bit of oversteer on the exit too. What a beautiful train, a freight train of cars. How many is that? Like seven or eight? eight? Seven. Well, Multiply seven that by 1,500 kilos, and that's a lot of metal being flung around this circuit. Gap yeah, oh, comes down to six tenths at the front. Hobson, though, trying to make the move as he goes down the inside. No, he can't get Wayne Burke in the one performance car. Again, looking to the outside to find it. Again, nothing coming along at turn number 10. That's the Hobo. Good corner, though. He gets good runs out of there, but he won't have a chance into turn number one. Focus to second, though. Burton has been caught. He certainly has. Ethan Greg Galt uh, on the exit of Quebec corner. You can see him looming in the background now, and Burton will start watching his mirrors because uh, Greg Galt, he is looking mighty aggressive. It was an 18-1-8 on the last lap for Burton versus a 17-7 for Ethan Greg Galt just at 17.7, so that just shows you how quick he's running at the moment. Won't be close enough this time by to make the move, but that train that we continue to focus on, well, there certainly could be moves happening in this one. Little mistake from Kelly. Cooper Webster dives down the inside. He'll try it again, and will it be another case of back in line, sir? Back in line, sir? No, we'll back it all the way to turn eight, sir, we will say, as now Corey Preston looks to go uber aggressive against Chris Robinson, forces his way to the outside try and make that move. Gets a bit of side draft on the door as well, as he now puts away through. Oh, it's too tight by Ryan Andre. Andre. He's lost Andre. it. Bang! Oh. Into Chris Robinson he goes, and Robinson's day is done, and well, that there for Corey Preston was just being a little too aggressive for my liking. Oh, modem simulation replay. Let's dissect this. So running side by side, I think Preston, oh, already made a bit of contact with him and then got caught on the grass. Uh I mean, I, I don't have much on the track. Say. He did, he did, but unfortunately, Robinson, I think the innocent victim, uh, at least in the second part. Now, here's the question here. Did Robinson give Corey Preston enough room on that outside? Because that, that will the be question. the question that will be made. But it also has to be remembered here that Corey Preston does have a habit, not saying that he's guilty all the time, but he has a habit of getting into incidents, and that will play some sort of form into what happens in that incident review. Oh, this is for second. Ethan Griggold as well and truly caught. Jake Burton now, he's gonna try around the outside of eight and into nine. Oh, no, he backs out of it for at least one more corner, but Ethan Griggold, he was the fastest car on track last lap. Let's see what he can do this time. Well, he needs to find this one position in about now because he's got 10 laps to go and he's got to catch at about five and a half tenths jared filsa i'm not kidding anyone i don't think he's got enough to manage to do that with filsa running 18 flat at the moment at the front of this field but everywhere else you look there are still battles marlon mcmullen and riley preston are going at it and riley preston has got 30 laps at the moment and just looking at what he has been able to do by my calculations, he is very due a stop, very now. Oh. McMullen down the inside, and he's going to steal one. And, oh, Ethan Gregolt, sorry, not Ethan Gregolt, Ethan Warren trying to find that position. Bit of contact there, and surely there's a fuse and fairy dust in the car for Riley Preston now. Yeah, something like that. Pre uh, Preston's been in the wars in this race, and have a look at how aggressive Warren is, and so smooth through Moss as well. Meanwhile, Burton and Greg Galt side by side into eight once again. Nope. Nope, indeed. Every time, every time it's covered. But look oh, at this. No. Going to try and pick him off at 10. And Burton's going to have to let him go. Going to try and get the up and under. Bit of contact on the exit. Well scouted and blocked there by Greg Galt. He block passed his way through. And he's up into second. And Burton on the older tyres will now have a long, long way to go. If he wants to try and pull that back, Greg Galt. Finally gets damage limitation complete in second as finally Riley Preston pits it. He certainly does. Let's see what happened here between Burton and Greg Galton. This is a well-executed opportunistic move. Just made it up the inside, sliding it through the corner, just parking it on the exit so Burton can't get any extra acceleration. Good move. Very good move as Wayne Burke has lost the position to Brenton Hobson. So that is the change for 12th position 
out on the road. Those drivers then exchange their positions and now look to battle. Here comes Michael Barron trying to get past Kurt Stenberg for the final two spots inside the top 20. Jacob Knight wants to get Exto Gaming inside that top 20. That would be so big for them, but not quite there for uh, Jacob Knight at the moment, but he's now looking to get on the noisy pedal. He's looking to get aggressive. He absolutely is. Good three-car battle here for the last few positions in the top 20. And Jacob Knight, as you mentioned, Exto Gaming, a relatively new team that uh, that split off from Redback Racing Team some time ago, headed up by uh, Mr. Bradley Ratu. These guys uh, love their racing, and you see them making appearances in many of the Australian touring car leagues that we see on the iRacing Esports Network and Lee Ellis around. Oh, no, Lee, that's not what we wanted to see from the 18 machine modem simulation replay then available for this one. So he's coming up through f uh, four into five, and he gets on the brakes, and that's a send down oh. the inside, and it's the third time for Forza and El Narby. And if, well, first time you can say one thing, second I mean, time you can say a second, but, you know... It's getting I mean, a bit yeah. silly now, really. I, I think the stewards have to step in and start uh, harshening up the penalties there, because... Forzan's a lap down at this stage in 31st position. There's no reason why he should be fighting. Yeah, that's um, that that's not the kind of behaviour that we really want to see from drivers in this series, especially in that particular circumstance. Just way too aggressive on entry. But we're just the commentators. The stewards will be the ones who ultimately have the final decision. We look at the last couple of positions in the top 10. Meanwhile, Ethan Warren putting a lot of pressure on Marlon McMullen here. Yes, he is. And Marlon McMullen, remember, went for the early call. Come down on pit road. He's up nine positions into ninth. And Ethan Warren now closing that gap to within a car length. And on the outside, he's going to be unable to go and make that move. But look at how much speed he carries through the first part of the corner. Little bit of a wiggle as he tries to deal with the vehicle, just dealing with the turbulences coming along. There's Ian Ford in the background as well. He'll want to get back into the top 10 and recover this race fully. So this is now a three-car scrap for nine. It certainly is. And really looking forward to seeing what Ethan Warren can do versus Marlon McMullen here. Ethan is uh, one of the newer guard of sim races. He's been around for a couple of years, yes, but he's still a spring chicken compared to Marlon McMullen, that's for sure. Marlon McMullen has seen uh, uh, the moss grow at Moss Corner, so to speak. So for the time <laughs> being anyway, but Mullen uh, still trying to play defensive card. Here's Ethan Warren. He's just weaving all over the place, trying to get a little bit of something to give him a boost up on the brakes. On the brakes, so they go up the hill into Moss, and he's a little wider on that line. And oh, he gives him a massive shunt to say, come on, look at Ian Ford behind me. There's nothing I can do right now because I'm just stuck stoically behind you here comes ian ford he'll now look to the outside to make this move outside it will be yep certainly so that's an interesting position to be in especially with another car he's around wide. you he's run a bit too wide and that's way out in the marbles no way he could recover that no no chance at all but he's got time on his side he's got six laps when they cross the line to go and make that move but mullen under pressure on the exit wiggle on of oversteer coming along trying to put the massive amount of torque that these australian touring cars have uh, as ethan warren does not manage to make a move lee ellis is stopped on circuit surely uh -oh. a caution's got to be thrown late now lee ellis is right on the racing line a big big incident i believe for him and I think something has to be said as Engine Blue heading into turn number one. And surely they've got to throw the caution. Well, he's on pit exit. So uh, conceivably he could be asked to, he could ask to have a tow and have it granted with the race still staying green. They haven't thrown the safety car yet. So obviously they think it's not a problem. Safety car comes out and late and so late. The big game changer comes late. There will be a four-lap four shootout for this one. The field will bunch itself up together, and Phil Cell's procession has suddenly turned into a full-out battle. This is the finish that we wanted to see. We would have seen uh, the Phil Cell of 2018, but for that stricken car of Lee Ellis, this is going to be a fantastic end. Oh, my word. Well, Ethan Greg Galt was second best for a long, long time. And for Jake Burton, for Ethan Grigg Gold, for Madison Down, it's a chance to make positions. Don't count G Gilliam out in fifth. 
Suslan Harlow is in sixth. And these are all drivers who have themselves a chance to go out there and try and attack and make something happen. You are under safety car conditions. There are five laps to go in this event. It is a safety car and it has come so late that this is going to be a very nail-biting two-lap dash to the end. Absolutely. And Ethan Grig Galt was the fastest car on track again over the last two laps. So Phil Cell is really going to face pressure when the green flag drops. Now, here's the question. Grig Galt knows that those points are going to be very much tied. If not, he's going to be ahead if he wins the longer of the two races. So now Grig Galt knows if I don't want my points in the championship to be slashed from 35 to 5 points, I've got to now go out there and make the move on Jared Philsell. It's tough. He is probably number one driver in that team in terms of prestige and pace. But Grig Galt's proving there are no number one drivers in this team. We're both fighting for the same championship. And I will fight with everything that I have available within my holder. And that's exactly what you want. I mean, team orders, it's, uh, it's understandable when they happen. But as fans, we don't want to see that. We want to see the drivers battling with each other. We want to see them showing exactly what they can do. And uh, the ERT cars being allowed to race each other, you know, I'm all for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Indeed. So we're just getting ourselves uh, a little bit of sorting out of how the field looks then uh, as they go through. But your top 10, Phil Sell, Grig Galt, Burton, Down, Gilliam, JSH, Jackson, Susan Harlow, Ross, uh, Myers, McMullen and Ethan Warren round out the top 10. This is good for Ian Ford as well, remember. He's in 11th position. He's uh, trying to recover this one. And with a field bunched up, he may be able to jump up to maybe 8th position late if he can get some good moves in right at the death. Yeah, Ian Ford has to be more aggressive than he's ever been in this one. Lee Ellis still stopped at pit exit. I believe he will be given the all clear once the field has gone by to uh, escape back to the pits. It's uh, an awful sight to see that entire field going by you. A couple of drivers coming in to get tyres as well. Riley Blythe among them. Yes, and a couple of drivers know that pit lane exit is very much closed. So... They are in a little bit of trouble if they've just come down in. They will have to wait for the pit lane to open once again as uh, Lee uh, is now cleared and the pit lane exit will now be opened up. So they'll be able to get themselves going once again and get themselves back onto the rear. But now this becomes the question. It's ERT versus ERT. It's a repeat of what happened in race one. But now Grig Gulp's got to be more aggressive with the way that he makes this one happen. The lights are coming down. The sun is setting and the track is very much in a lot of shade. So as the lights are going to start coming on here at most sport, as the darkness sets into play, this is the question. Jared Philsell, can you hold off? A young and probably charging uh, Ethan Griggolt, who has all the potential in the world at the moment. Pace car will come in this lap race. Yep, lights off. And away Simon Mazomo goes. Now the field is under the control of Jared Philsell in the number one. And Mazomo will want to get out of the way. Quick sharp. There he goes, zooming along in that flat six Porsche Carrera Cup car. And the trundling train of Australian touring cars far behind him. It's going to be all on what Phil Cell does and how Grig Galt reacts to it. Will Phil Cell go early? Will he wait until the apex of the last turn to go? Find out. Three lap as they cross the start finish line. Just 12 kilometers and a little bit less to hold off Ethan Grig Galt. What does Phil Cell have left? What does Ethan Grigg got have? He goes incredibly early there and gets a tenth and a half on it. That's a good jump from Phil oh, Cell. Green flag goes. And his issues, though, as they go a little bit further back all over the curb, and they're going to struggle in the middle of the pack to get themselves going. We're all okay, though. We're going green. We're going good. As we've got three laps to go, and now all of a sudden, Burton drops a lot of time here to Madison Down as well in third and fourth. And this will allow Gilliam the chance to battle it out, potentially for a podium. 
and that's the kind of result that Gilliam will want after showing his great potential in so many practice sessions in uh, the previous rounds of this series. But Phil Cell and Grid Galt starting to break away from these guys, and you can see that Phil Cell is not getting away. No, he's not getting away at all. These two other cuts above at the moment as they get on the brakes. Oh, that's a little wide. It is a little wide. And Burton follows it. Madison Down's going to pick up position three here as now Ethan Grigg goes into issues. Now Susan Harlow, JSH trying to get past Andrew Gilliam here in the fifth position. So now look at that. Madison Down, though, he's in third. And is this going to be a reverse karmic justice here as Burton dives to the inside, looks to make a move. Let's know as Ark this too wide, too deep into oh. turn number eight. Burton's got his move. Gilliam is holding everything on the outside, trying to keep that one together. Susan Harlow will have the inside for the final corner. Two laps to go, and Susan Harlow's got it. Oh, wow. What a statement, though, by Andrew Gilliam. And, oh, my goodness, car's in the wall. And, and back onto the track, too. Oh, that's not... Oh, that's awkward. Goodness me. They're going to have to be careful. Jordan Ross at a standstill there, almost on the racing line. Brenton Just Hobson as well involved. So let's just get an eye on that one very quickly. They were coming through the final corner and it was Ian Ford trying to come in and there was an instant just in front of that. So that one will be Brady Myers who came together with Jordan Ross at the final corner. Ross was trying to go for the inside of Gilliam. Didn't work out. Myers got loose on exit, ran into him and Jordan Ross coming back onto the circuit may cop a penalty for this. Keep going, though, because we got two laps, maybe even a lap and a bit left to go here, Reese. And all of a sudden, Phil Sells clear by almost a second. Absolutely is. We're just getting a quick onboard of this from Brenton Hobson's perspective. He was a bit of an innocent victim in all of this. Right to the back of Ian Ford and round he went. But as we go back live for the final time, they're about to start the last lap. And Phil Sell, as you said, he is clear. It's very much clear as Ian Ford loses two positions on the Mario Andretti straight. Battles to go in. Susan Harlow and Gilliam are going right at it. Contact as they head through the final corner. And oh, big moment. Round goes oh, Gilliam. No. Bang into the wall. Very similar to that one accident that we all remember here. But for the moment anyway, white flag comes out for Jared Philsdale. But Mullen under pressure from Ethan Warren as well in their own little battle. Burton is clear of where he needs to be with Madison Dow. Ethan Greg Gold has nothing compared to Phil Cell. Battle for sixth position though going on as McMullen through turn three. Why goes Ethan Warren and that could cost him absolutely everything. Preston and Rizzo now fighting for a top 10 finish and at the moment they're both looking at this one going well go on we've got something left in the tank we might as well show it but back straight comes along for Jared Vilsell on his final lap through at Mosport he loves this place he's so good at this place he knows exactly what he needs at high speed tracks and he masters it every single and time he makes his way to turn number eight no mistakes he never does as he now heads himself towards turn number nine and australia's phenom is once again stood atop of everybody else jared philsell rounds the final corner and takes double duty here at most but he sweeps it as he now heads over to the next rounds of the championship. It's uh, Webster who falls behind Ethan Warren. Corey Preston holds and survives against Ross Rizzo. He certainly does. And we've got a uh, modem simulation replay of an incident that Michael Barron was involved in. He got a slow start off Quebec corner and that's looking pretty awkward. Mega black car coming in. Oh, Forza El Nabi. Once again, contact at Moss. Oh, I think he'll be uh, banned for a little while there. That's the fourth incident Oops. he's had in this race, and it pretty much shuts. But official classified results then are going to come in then from this race at most sports. It had a late, late caution, but one mistake was all the difference that Jared Philsell needs. He wins by eight tenths of a second in 53 minutes and 37 seconds. He beats Eaton Grig Galt with Jake Burton finishing off in third position. Madison Down gets fourth with JSH. Jackson Susan Harlow going absolutely nowhere to finish in fifth with Marlon McMullen up 12 positions for a sixth place finish. Ethan Warren will get seventh. Cooper Webster gains one position to finish in eighth. Corey Preston, a fantastic performance. 22nd to ninth. So from Ross Rizzo as well. 30th to 10th.
Kurt Stenberg in 11th, another great result for him. Sean Kelly and Emily Jones make it a TTR 11, 12, 13. Jacob Knight in 14th, Brett Loxton and Ian Ford rounding out the top 16. What might have been for 40? Yes, David Sanford gets 17th, then he's up 16 positions with Wayne Burke dropping back to 18th in the end. Michael Taliancic and Brady Myers will round out the top 20 with Chris Coxhead, Michael Cracknell, Andrew Fraser, Fawzan El Nabi finishing 24th, but having four incidents to his name. Riley Blythe comes home in 25th position and Riley Preston right behind him. Borgen McMillan 27th and 28th with Andrew Gilliam. My goodness, your heart breaks for him. The stewards might look at that incident between himself and JSH. Jordan Ross rounds out the top 30. Another what might have been story. Michael Barron, the first car lap down along with Brenton O'Brien. Yes, and from there on, there are drivers who are lapsed down or failed to finish. The likes of Brenton Hobson. Hobbo 88 was having such a great run. Kyle Stokes gets 34th. Lee Ellis, Chris Robinson, Thomas Hins, uh, Stephen Varga and Sam Blacklock, along with Dylan Shepard, all failing to make it to the end. But we're going to... We come back a post-race show. Yeah, weird Sims... We'll be coming to you after... Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to VH Scops. It's a very quick post-race show. We're running out of time a little bit, but Jared Philsell wins both races. Jared, very quickly, because we are uh, a little bit cash-strapped on time. Just how brilliant is it? Two big race victories, and you find yourself now looking at potentially leading the championship very soon. Yeah, great night by the boys. Um, to be honest, I think that's probably the best setup together as a whole as a team that we've probably ever, ever had, so... I can't thank the boys enough for their ma amazing talents behind the wheel in uh, getting the dock out this week. Hyper dock confirmed. And well, big back-to-back -back victories. Now, how do you uh, assess yourself for the next rounds of the championship? The middle part of the season, uh, you had complete dominance over everyone. How is this one going to play out for the next race? 
Yeah, we'll just uh, have a look and see how we go. Um, obviously, this was a pretty strong track for me, and I had to do double duties with the Porsche here last night as well, so capping off a pretty decent weekend for myself. So, um, yeah, I don't even know where we're racing next. So, yeah. I've... Well, we'll see how that goes for you, Jared. Phil Sell with a big victory. Reese very quickly standing by with Ethan Greg Gold. Yes, indeed. A second place for you, Ethan Grigolt, in both races, but you really had to work for it in race two. Yeah, look, um, uh, the car was awesome. We qualified in, in absolutely awesome positions. And um, yeah, the first race was uh, was pretty straightforward. Just uh, drive behind Jared, keep the tyres in check and come home with a second. But um, yeah, that second one was a... Uh, was a little bit more difficult, I must say. Um, getting punted off at the start there with a bit of an incident. Not 40s fault at all, of course. But, um, but yeah, it definitely had a cutout for me coming through the pack. Yeah, yeah, you definitely seem to have a good car set up here. Do you think you could have been able to challenge Jared for the win after that last caution? Um, after the last one, probably not. Uh, I'd use my tyres up quite a bit trying to get through the pack. And, and to be honest, I just wanted to, f to finish the race and not do anything stupid. But um, in... in I must admit, in the first race, I felt like I could have had a bit of a go at, at Jared. It, I felt like my set had a bit more turn than his, but um, but I, I did sort of the team thing and, and, and finished up a one, two, three. Excellent stuff for Evolution Racing Team. That's Ethan Griggolt there. And uh, Jake, you have Jake. I do. Very, very quickly, Mr. Burton. Uh, a nice third place finish there to finish off uh, your evening. Um, just not having the tyres at the end. Uh, not really. I think Ethan and Jared were in a in a class of their own tonight. Um, I, I don't think it was set up either. I think that those guys just just drove away. They just had the pace. Um, Ethan put a really really awesome move on me. Um, he deserved it, and I, I couldn't really keep with him. Um, so, yeah, those two drove awesome tonight. Um, it's a bit of a shame about what happened in race one, um, but. Yeah, nonetheless, I think um, I've got some work to do going into the next round, but um, just lack of preparation this round, I think. Man, it was a uh, an ERT whitewash, really. Well, a little bit of preparation to do for next round. Jake Burson there joining us, but we really do have to just jump off the air very quickly. A massive thanks to everyone who's got it done for us. The likes, of course, of West End Mazda, of course, Oceanic Sim Racing, Motum Simulations as well for the replay. That's been Jay Kennedy. That's been Reese Gardner. Jared Filser with a big double victory. Starts to command and conquer as he moves his well way forward. And it's me, Jake Sperry, saying good night, good night. Fantastic. This is GT Racing right now. He's got traction. He's got rid of the outside. Oh, both of them. Maloney. Oh, oh, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up to him. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my goodness. Half the field's going to get rolled. Six very close. These guys are going to want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my oh, God. God, what?